previously on Left Behind. Sir? Yes? Clergy, right? Yes. Bruce Barnes? Yes. Over here. Confirmed. Your friend is presentable. Some of these I wouldn't dare show you, but you could see him if you want. I, I need to. Thank you. I'm sorry, sir. I, I can't let you do that. Those eyes. I'll close them. Pulse. Could, could you check for a pulse? Sir, they don't bring them out here unless they've been pronounced. <laughs> How long has it been? Oh, almost half an hour. Ray said I should come for him if he's not. Daddy! Oh, it doesn't look good. Ray, did you find him? I'm sorry. Oh, he didn't make it. Oh, no! God help us. This is what Bruce told us. The red horse of the apocalypse. But God still has his witnesses. God still will be victorious. I just don't know how. Based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 25 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. You can have the car after we get to the church. We need to get the word out about Bruce. I can't believe he's really gone. I can drive if you need me to. Uh, no, the only way we'll get there is to get out of this traffic. Dad! Wilford, what are you doing? Oh, shoulder right. You gotta get out of this mess. We'll take sight. I have to find out about Earl. Earl? Halliday. He flew Global One back east for me. I'm not sure, but I think I killed him. Ray, those two guards up on the overpass. Yeah, traffic. At a time like this, welcome to a world full of uniformed wannabes. What's he saying? Not my concern. How could they possibly know that? There's no limit to these guys. You can't outrun them now, Ray. I don't know how they tracked you down, but it's not going to be good for either of us if we're seen together. There's no time to run. They're coming down the hill. Here. Here, here. I've got a set of phony IDs in the name of Herb Katz. I'll use these just in case. Uh, tell them I'm a pilot friend of yours or something. Got it. Uh, my guess is they won't care. Carpathia's probably just trying to reconnect. Oh, I hope you're right. Yeah, he wants his pilot. He wants to get to New Babylon. I see one. What's the other one doing back there? Oh, they're checking the plates. Carpathia knew you had to rent a car, so they tracked you down that way. Is this what the next five years are going to be like? Are you Rayford Steele? Depends on who's asking. This car with this license number was rented at O'Hare by someone claiming to be Rayford Steele. If this is not who you are, you're in very serious trouble. Wouldn't you agree that regardless of who I am, we're all in serious trouble? Sir, I need to know if you're Rayford Steele. I am. Can you prove that, sir? You flag me down, you tell me I'm driving Rayford Steele's rental car, and now you want me to prove I'm who you think I am? Sir, I have global community potentate Carpathia patched through to a secure cell phone. I don't even know where he's calling from. If I put someone on the phone and say it's Rayford Steele, it had better be Rayford yeah, Steele. Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. Here. Thank you, Captain Steele. And the others? Family and friends. Look, let's not keep the potentate waiting, okay? I'm gonna have to ask you to take the call outside the car, sir. 
You understand the security risks? <sighs> Sir, in the event we transport Captain Steele to the rendezvous point, would you be able to handle the disposition of this vehicle? Sure. I'm Mrs. Steele. Wherever Mr. Steele goes, I go. That will be up to the potentate, and whether there's room in the chopper. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll, all right, I guess we'll see you soon. How are we going to get wherever it is we're going? A chopper should be here momentarily. I'll carry whatever bags you may need to transfer. Can you pop the trunk, dear? Oh, sure. Amanda and I have to rendezvous with Carpathia, but he can't tell me where he is or where we'll meet. I get the feeling it's not far away, unless we're going to an airfield to fly somewhere else. We'll go to the church and tell the others about Bruce. No, no. First, get the car back to the rental company. It'll be too easy to connect you with me. Dad, careful. Being with Carpathia may be the safest place right now. You two, you be careful. Come on. Look, I'm going as fast as I can here. Well, that's the shot I've been waiting for. Get us to O'Hare, and I'm stringing GC Network News. Well, if you got wings, now might be a good time to use it, because we're going to be here a while. Ah! Hey, hey, take it easy, man. All right, put it in park. What? Put it in park and get out of the driver's seat. All right, all right. Your story, good guy. Okay, now. Come on. Come on. Just a little opening there. Oh, huh. Have a nice day. Hey, what are you doing? This is a brand new truck. Hang on. Whoa! Watch it, man! Whoa. You mean Carpathia's in Illinois already? Yeah, that's what the pilot says. Must have gotten him out of Washington before the attack. Why wouldn't they have taken him to a bomb shelter somewhere? Well, that's what I thought. Over to the Pentagon or NSA. I guess his intelligence people figured the militia would attack there first. I'm not sure I want to be near this guy for any reason. Chloe, turn that up. It's about New York. We're going to take you now to another area that was very hard hit. Uh, Mike Chandler is live in Chicago. I'm Mike Chandler, live Buck, in our apartment in New York? Where Chicago are we going to live? They won't let anybody back in for days, maybe longer. Even if our cars weren't destroyed, we probably can't get to them. What are we going to do? I can't stand this traffic. <laughs> Too close for that. Report from Chicago now. Reports of a, a huge blast just seconds ago at O'Hare Airport. O'Hare? Didn't Dad say they might be taking him to an airport? Hang on. <laughs> Buck, what are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. The one thing I'm not doing. I'm not poking along in a traffic jam while the world. <laughs> I hope they don't expect me to fly that thing. Valir? No, sir. The guy who flew it will get you as far as Dallas. Ah. What is this place? Uh, Glenview. An old naval air station. Been closed for years. Right in here, sir. If you'll have a seat in here, the potentate will be with you shortly. Ma'am, please have a seat. I'm free to stand, aren't I? Suit yourself. So, sweetie, you're just trashing it because it's a rental? We actually have some place we're headed here. Yeah, well, we need a different vehicle. Yeah, soon if you keep this up. Yeah, something tells me it's our only chance to survive. What are you going to do, buy a tank? You know, if it wasn't so conspicuous, I might. Whoa. Hang on! Whoa. You know, I used to live around here. What are we looking for? The car dealers on Northwest Highway. Oh, no, what? Sign! All right. There's Northwest Highway. Yeah, packed with traffic. How hey, I'm in a groove. Do? Watch this. I just hope Buck and Chloe weren't anywhere near O'Hare when that went off. Mm, no, here he comes. Who's the other guy? Leon Fortunato, one of Carpathia's yes men. For being in the middle of a world war, they look rather upbeat. A Captain Steele. <laughs> um. Uh, no, Anna, uh, Mrs. Steele, it is good to see you both and to know you are well. It's Amanda. Uh, forgive me, Amanda. In all the excitement, uh, I'm sure you understand. Well, my friends, we need to head home. 
Uh, what is the latest? Uh, nothing different, sir. Lots of destruction in the major cities. Mm. And the activity? It is largely centered in the Midwest and on the East Coast? And some in the South as well, sir. Mm. Virtually nothing on the West Coast, then. Yes, sir. How about Dallas-Fort Worth? DFW suffered a hit. Only one major runway still open. Nothing coming in, but lots of planes heading out. And the military strip nearby? Still operational, sir, if my information is correct. All right, then. Very good. I am certain no one knows our whereabouts, but just in case, Leon, what do you have for me? This will cover your head, and here is the overcoat. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Now, please, we will leave together. Uh, Leon, the jet is where? Just outside the door, as you instructed, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, officer, thank you for your service. Mr. Fortunato and the Steels and I will be flown to a new plane, on which Captain Steele will transport me back to New Babylon. And that plane would be... Uh, uh, let us not give our young friend here any information he would have to be responsible for. Officer, you may go. Thank you, sir. The Condor 216 awaits us near Dallas. We will then fly west to go east, if you know what I mean. I'm afraid I've never heard of a... a what did you call it? The Condor. I wouldn't be qualified to I fly. have been assured that you are more than qualified. But what is a Condor 2? A hybrid I named myself. Surely you do not think what has happened here today was a surprise. Well, I'm learning. You are learning. I like that. Now come, let me tell you about my spectacular new aircraft as we travel. <clears throat> Sir, my recommendation is that you and I proceed outside and board the jet. The Steels will follow when they see us get on board. Yes. Good. Uh, Captain Steele? Fine. <laughs> we'll wait here till you board. Well... Have you ever once in your life heard Nikolai Carpathia misspeak? Yeah, or misspeak? Stutter, stammer, have to repeat a word, forget a name. Besides your name, in other words? He does that on purpose, and you know it. Mm, you're probably right. But with what motive? I have no idea. Well, how can you expect a shred of decency from the most evil man in the history of the universe? You're just full of surprises, aren't you? I have to admit it, I've never been conventional. <laughs> All right, Mr. Williams, I ran the numbers for you, and I came up with this. Okay. That is, unless you've decided to trade in the Lincoln. Actually, it's a rental, and I'm going to ask you to return that to O'Hare for me. Well, that's, uh, that's highly unusual. Um, I'd have to send two of my people plus an extra vehicle so they could get back. It's, uh... Yes, it's asking a lot, isn't it? Well, it's been nice chatting with you. Well, bye, bye Please, sit down, Mr. Williams. Mrs. Williams, I was I'm only sure saying... I'm sure it won't be a problem for your competitors to help me. Well, well I, I, I was saying that we'll help in any way we can. Uh -huh. I'll talk to the district manager. I'm sure he'll sign off on the little errand. Good. Now, as you can see, we'll be able to drive the Range Rover out of here for under six figures. Okay. How long will it take? Uh, well, well we could do that within the hour. Good. Here. Global community. Make it a half an hour and we've got a deal. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Williams. Uh, we have a deal. Chico Hernandez getting this deal. Chico? Carpathia said I might learn something up here, but I, I haven't flown anything smaller than a 707 for years. This will seem like a motorbike compared to what you usually fly. <laughs> Any reports of what's ahead? Weather's clear all the way. DC intelligence spots no enemy aircraft between here and touchdown. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and put on the headphones. This is your virtual first officer. How do you copy? Loud and clear. <laughs> uh, in case you were wondering, this channel is secure. Ah, gotcha. Thanks. So, I'm curious about Global Community One. You haven't heard? Negative. New York's bad news. The hangar she was in was vaporized. And the pilot? Halliday? He got out of there after he put the thing on the ground. Apparently, GC1 had a few rainy day surprises wired in. That saved her butt. The countermeasures. Yeah. Couldn't help her on the ground, though. Earl's safe, then. That's the word I got. Do you know him? Not personally. Heard a lot about him in the past few weeks. From Carpathia? From the GC North American delegation. 
Wait a minute. The delegation told you about Earl? I take it you've worked with them. I was the one who got him assigned to fly Global One to New York. You'll see him in Dallas. I will. He'll take you through the paces of the new aircraft. Wait, uh, let me get this straight. Earl Halliday knows about the new plane and is conversant enough to take <laughs> me Earl Halliday practically built the Condor 216. Designed most of the mods on it himself. <laughs> Made sure anyone who is certified on a 777 will be able to fly it. Same fly-by-wire setup. Basically, Boeing's rig on steroids. Why wouldn't I have been told? Especially if I'm supposed to fly the thing. Ask the boss. The potentate tends to be, you know, careful. So, he apparently doesn't trust me. I'm not sure he trusts anybody. If you were Nikolai Carpathia, would you trust anyone? Check this out. Get a CD player up there. <laughs> yeah, well, Radar detector. Six the... figures. You know. <laughs> Don't you just feel like you just spent the devil's money? Oh, I know I did. And the Antichrist has never invested a better dollar for the cause of God. <laughs> hey, check this out. Huh. Indestructible. Goes anywhere. Yeah. Two-wheel, four-wheel, all-wheel drive. You know, you slapped down that global community credit card like it was your own. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of limit do they give you? Carpathia approves a quarter million for most, but senior-level people have a special code. They're unlimited. Literally? Didn't you see the eyes of that sales manager when he phoned for verification? Well, yeah, but doesn't somebody have to approve purchases like that? I report directly to Carpathia. Hmm. He might want to know why I bought a Range Rover, <laughs> but it'll be easy to explain. We have to get where we need to go. We're all shot down in route to Baghdad uh, and to Babylon. I don't want to hear anymore. No way. Can we just go back to the church? Well, I'm looking for a report from Israel. All the confusion, I can see somebody attacking the witnesses. Or trying to take out Ben Judah. Your mother and I have talked, and we are agreed. The world is at war. How am I supposed to concentrate on school? Israel has been spared the terrible bombings. We must continue with our lives. The teachers look at us, Dad. They know who you are and what you've done. Which is what? I have betrayed the faith. Dr. Tzion ben Judah was once a respected scholar. Now I have become anathema. I follow Messiah. I wish I could shield you from this, but I cannot. Let us go with you today. Stay at home. I know this is a frightening time, Nina. I have fears as well. We're being watched, you know that. I do. And I know who is watching over us. We have taken every earthly precaution. The armed guards are home even now. I, I will see you this afternoon. Mother. Please, go now. Bye, Dad. Bye. God be with you, my children. Wait, Jaime. I want to see them safely inside. He will return for them at 3 and be home by 3.20. It will be public. Wear your mask. Let the car pull away first. I want no means of escape. And the two guards? Dispose of them first. What about the children? The rabbis are telling you, but do what you must. Before you leave, burn his home. Anything else I should know about Dallas? You're going to be fearing a lot of VIPs back to Iraq. But that's nothing new, is it? No. And I'm afraid it's lost its luster. Well, for what it's worth, I envy you. <sighs> don't envy me, Captain Hernandez. Whatever you do, don't envy me. Oh, I've never been so happy to see a place in my whole hmm. life. Tell me about it. Is that Loretta's car in front? I think so. Bruce. Oh. I'm not looking forward to this. Loretta? Are you okay? People have been calling. I, I don't know what to tell them. Oh. Pastor Bruce couldn't survive that, could he? Did y'all see him? We didn't see him. But my dad did. Mr. Steele did? Is Bruce all right? I'm sorry, Loretta. He's not... Bruce is gone. Oh. Good. 
what, what would you mind? I was just praying I'd catch a glimpse of him. If he's under one of those sheets. Oh, that young man was like family to me. I know. He loved you like a mother. He, he was my only family. I, I lost everybody. Yes, ma'am. Every living relative. Oh, shh. That young man. I learned more from him these last two years than 60 years of Sunday school. That's okay. Are Mr. and Mrs. Steele okay? I think so. Rayford was called back to work. What are you doing in the office? Working on Bruce's stuff. What stuff? When he got back from his trip to India, he called and asked me to bring his laptop to the hospital. I was on my way out the door when he called again. Said they were taking him to intensive care. I think he had a premonition. A premonition? I think he knew he might die. He slipped into a coma right after that. But he told me to print everything on his hard drive. His Bible studies and sermon preparation, stuff like that? I guess. He said just make sure I had plenty of paper. Hmm. Excuse me. I'm scared to death of those computers, but Bruce talked me through how to do it. I suppose I should just shut it down now. What? Did he have you print duplicates? I don't think so. Loretta, <laughs> there must be thousands of sheets here. Every page is personal writing, sermon notes, uh, devotional thoughts. Uh, look, here's a letter to somebody he met in Israel. Why would he... You think he wanted us to use it? We might as well shut it off. It's no good to him now. No. Loretta... Listen to me. You can still serve God by serving Bruce. Uh, I don't know that. Loretta, we all need your help. There's a gold mine in there. Bruce is still with us in those pages. His knowledge, his teachings, his, his love and compassion, it's all there. I don't know what this place will do for a pastor or teacher, but in the meantime, this, this is a treasure we can all use. Don't you want to edit some? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look, but... But there's a beauty in the form. This was Bruce off the cuff, you know? Like like he was sitting across from us in his office. We should take this to a quick print shop and get a thousand copies of... A thousand copies? That'll cost a fortune. Don't worry about the cost. I can't think of a better investment. Dr. Ben Judah, I will go now for your family. Oh, wait, wait, Hammy. Look at this. If my study is correct, the freedoms we now have of religion, to worship, to study, it will be curtailed at an alarming rate. Perhaps the uprising against the global community will... No, no. The Antichrist will gain more power because of it, I am sure. Believers in Messiah will be killed for their faith. All the more reason why you must consider the claims of Jesus. I do not want to be a martyr, Doctor. I know you are concerned for me. You have been a loyal employee, and I thank you. But what good is my message if I cannot convince my friend? I beg you, do not wait. Rabbi, I must go. Y your wife and children expect me. Yes, thank you. Please be careful, Jaime, and consider what I have told you. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Busteed. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you. Last time on Left Behind. I have to find out about Earl. Earl? Halliday. I'm not sure, but I think I killed him. Ah! What in the world? A mushroom cloud? <laughs> Ray, have you ever once in your life heard Nikolai Carpathia forget a name? Besides your name, in other words? I'm sorry, Loretta. Bruce is gone. Earl's safe. Then. You'll see him in Dallas. I will. Mother. Please, go now. Bye, Dad. Bye.
Based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 26 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. He is very sorry, but he, he was... He said he would be here. Something must be wrong. No, no, he will be here soon. I left him at the university. He is working. What could be so important? He was very excited when I talked with him. More discoveries from the old texts. I told the rabbi I would pick you up. If it is any consolation, your mother is waiting for you at home. He said he would be here. How much longer before we arrive? Should be at DFW in about 10 minutes, Mr. Fortunato. Hmm. You must be hungry. I could eat. In fact, I could eat a lot. Captain Steele. I hadn't really thought about food until just now. Potentate Carpathia would like you to contact DFW Tower and have something nice waiting for us. What do you think he means by something nice? I'm sure you'll arrange something appropriate, Captain Hernandez. <sighs> All right. DFW, this is Global Community 3. Over. All right, I'll send this out to the prayer chain. Buck, you'll record the message for the incoming calls? I'm on it right now. <clears throat> Thank you for calling New Hope Village Church. The news of Pastor Bruce's death... Thank you for calling New Hope Village Church. The news of Pastor Bruce's death is true. Elder Rayford Steele saw him and believes he may have died before any explosives hit the hospital. Please, do not come to the church. There will be no meetings or services or further announcements until Sunday at the regular time. Thanks for calling and for your prayers. Sunday's meeting is going to be packed. Hmm, no doubt. I was thinking about following Loretta home just to make sure everything's okay. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. She'll certainly appreciate it. I'll see you soon. Okay. Hello? Yeah, I'm looking for Donnie Moore. You got him? This is Buck Williams at the church. I need some technical advice. Mr. Williams. Advice is my middle name. <laughs> well, is there any chance you could swing by the church and give me a hand? Ah, uh, yeah, I'll be right over. Oh, wait, did uh, Loretta have the phones off the hook for a while? Yeah, I think she did. Uh, she didn't have answers about Bruce, so I think she just turned him off. Oh, uh, boy, that's a relief. I just got her set up with this new system a few weeks ago, and I was hoping nothing was wrong. Uh, how is Bruce, by the way? Uh, well, I'll tell you when you get here, Donnie, okay? Yeah, sure thing. I'll okay. be right over. Would you look at that? Man, how many times have I landed on those runways? Wonder how long it'll take them to rebuild. Where are you gonna land? Military strip, due south. Our food is in Hangar Bay 3, is that correct, Captain Hernandez? Right. Uh, we're in 1 right now. Go through there to get to 3. The new plane is in the next hangar. Thank you. You may say goodbye to Captain Hernandez, Captain Steele. It is unlikely you will see him again. Been nice flying with you. Same here, sir. Hope you enjoy the new wings. Sir, the delegation... Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, Leon. Uh, before we eat, let me introduce you. Ambassadors... Captain Rayford Steele, my pilot. He will be taking us on to New Babylon. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure. The new plane is magnificent. <laughs> so I've heard. And this is his lovely wife, Amanda. Hello. Captain, I uh, believe you know Mr. Halliday. Earl. <laughs> Great to see you. Get away from me, Steele. <laughs> Earl? I mean it. I know I have to bring you up to speed on this plane, but I don't have to pretend to like it. Now leave me alone. Let the driver pull away. I will take the guard. He left. You take the I do not away. see him. By the door of the house. No, the rabbi. His children are there and his wife, but there is no rabbi. He must already be in the house. Pull down your mask. But if he is not here... Now... Is 
Casey, where is the rabbi? I will not betray my father! Tell us! Mother! Nina! Spare your life, kid. Tell me, Ben. I... Uh, now, before it's too late! I... I, I want to see your face! There, now tell me! I'd rather die than betray my little... father! The rabbi is not inside, but now... To the university. I am glad you are here. Rabbi, I... you must come at once. What is wrong? Something terrible. You must hurry. There is no time. My wife. Did something happen to my Please wife? Please put this on. For your own safety. I will not go until you explain They are what... dead, John. The zealots. They dragged them into the street. Mina? Daniel? They killed them. Oh, I should have been there. We must go. Quickly. It is my fault. John. I... I... I must go to them. I have to see them. You cannot. There is no time. I must get you to the boat. Michael will take you from there. But we must go. Oh, I cannot bear it. How oh, can I go on without them? Now, Rabbi. This way. Hurry. What in the world is Earl doing here? Well, it's a long story, and I'm not sure I know all of it yet. I do know he's not too happy about seeing me. So I gathered. What was Carpathia talking to you about on the plane? It was about food, of all things. He asked me what I wanted to eat. <laughs> World War III is raging and he's making dinner plans? Captain Steele, I've discussed our itinerary with Mr. Halliday here. Potentate Carpathia would like to be airborne as soon as possible. Can you give us an estimated time of departure? Leon, I haven't even seen this plane, let alone fly it. I won't give you a departure time until Rayford, I... I'm telling you, half an hour. I know you. I know this plane. Now trust me. I won't endanger these people because someone has a schedule. After I've been put through the paces, I'll let you know. Mr. Halliday, are you available to fly this plane? No, sir, I am not. Just let me have steel for 30 minutes, then I'm headed back to Chicago. So, you're a phone systems guy, but you sell computers. On the side, right. I just about double my income that way. Hey, you got a bunch of catalogs here if you want to... Yeah, I'd be interested in those. Yeah, I thought you might. Uh, is this the kind of thing you're looking for? <laughs> oh, I can see already there are too many choices. Why don't I tell you what I'm looking for, and you tell me if you can deliver? Hey, I can tell you right now I can deliver. All right, last week I sold this guy 30 sub notebooks with more power than any desktop anywhere. What's the matter? The printer. Oh, it sounds like it's either out of paper or ink. It's done. You know, I, I sold that machine to Bruce. It's top of the line. Incredible. There must be 5,000 pages here. Hey, you got any idea when Bruce is going to be back? Earl, you gotta let me know what's up here. Now tell me what's got... No, me. Rafer, you tell me. You tell me why I almost got killed. Look, I am more in the dark than you are. Right. Carpathia's pilot sets me up to fly Global One, and missiles suddenly appear out of nowhere. Look, I'm not on the inside like you think. I didn't even know about the new plane, let alone that you knew about the project. Why didn't you tell me you were working for Carpathia? I'm not working for Carpathia. I was pressed into service. I'm still a pan-con chief pilot at O'Hare. But when duty calls... Why didn't Carpathia tell me he was aware of you? Shh. Hang on a minute. Are you looking for what I think you're looking for? You never know who might be listening. <laughs> tell me about it. All right. I think we're clear. So what happened up there? What happened? was I was on a textbook ILS approach to JFK and suddenly we're being shot at. I managed to get the beast on the ground and I tailed it out of there. I'm telling you, I didn't know. Carpathia asked me to find somebody to fly Global One to New York. I, he didn't know I'd choose you. No. Actually, he must have. Who else would you pick? What are you saying? They asked me to help design this plane. Then you asked me to fly the original to New York. I was flattered. After it was over, they assigned me here to brief you on the Condor. Ah, still not tracking, Earl. Carpathia must have wanted my death to look like your decision, not his. Why would he want you dead? Maybe I know too much. 
Hey, I've been flying him all over the world. I have to know more than you, and he doesn't seem to want me dead. Watch your back, Ray. I've heard enough to know this is not all it seems. And I don't know how you got me into this, but I... I got you into this. Oh, hang on, pal. You're the one who encouraged me to take the job with Air Force One. Ray, driving Air Force One was a plum assignment, whether you recognized it or not. How was I to know it'd go south on you? All right, all right. Look, let's stop blaming each other and decide what we're supposed to do now. Yeah. What I'm going to do is bring you up to speed on this fine little contraption. And then, if my guess is correct, I'm a dead man. What are you talking about? Ray, it's a gut feeling. If they cared anything about me, they'd have gotten me out of New York. They'd have gotten me away from that plane. I think they hoped I'd still be on it. Huh. Well, then get some sort of emergency assignment at DFW. I mean, there has to be a huge need for PanCon personnel over there. Well, All you have to do is... People have arranged a ride back to Chicago, or at least in that direction. Well, tell them you don't want to put them out. Tell them you've got plenty of work here. I'll think about it. In the meantime, you need to see this rig. But, Ray, as an old friend, I want you to promise me that if anything does happen to me, tell my wife... Nothing is going to happen to you, Earl. So there's no question it was him. Rayford made a positive ID. Oh, poor Bruce. Well, what's going to happen to this church? Well, I know this sounds like a cliche, but I think God will provide. <laughs> I'm still having trouble believing it. I don't guess anything should surprise me anymore. I, I don't know what we're going to do now. Well, like I told Loretta, you have an opportunity to do something for God, and it's the greatest memorial you could ever give to Bruce. Well, whatever it is, I want in. Good. First, let me assure you that money is no object. Hey, I don't want to profit off something that's going to help the church. Fine, fine. Whatever profit you build in or don't build in, it's up to you. I'm just telling you that I need five of the absolute best, top-of-the-line computers, as small and compact as they can be, but with as much power, memory, and communication abilities as you can pack into them. And now you're talking my kind of language. Good, I hope so. I want no limitations. I want to take it anywhere, keep it concealed, store everything I want, and most of all, connect with anyone without the transmission being traced. Is that doable? Uh, well, I can put together something like those computers scientists use in the jungle when there's no place to plug in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of our reporters use those in remote areas. What do they have, built-in satellite dishes? Believe it or not, it's something like that. And, and I can add video conferencing if you want it. Definitely. And I want it fast. Oh, and Donnie. I need you to keep this confidential. Hey, you got it. You are the rabbi's driver, are you not? I am. You drove the children to their death this afternoon? I drove them home from school. I had no idea. Where is the rabbi now? I do not know. When did you see him last? I left to pick up his children. I... I have not seen him since. Liar! Believe me, I hope to hear from him, but I do not know where he is. Where did you go after the murders? I, I went home. After you murdered his wife and children, you simply I went home. I did not murder his wife and children. I would never harm them. What would you help someone else who wanted to? For money, perhaps? I had nothing to do with it. We will see. What am I supposed to do for a first officer? They pulled a triple seven guy from Trans-Pacific for the West Coast leg. McCollum joins you in San Francisco. Mac? When I went to Chicago, you were supposed to go back to Iraq. I only know what I'm told, Ray. And what's with flying west to go east, as Carpathia says? No idea. But I have noticed all the war and devastation seems to be east of the Mississippi. Huh. Almost like it was planned. Yeah. This plane was designed and built in Dallas, but not at DFW, where it might have been destroyed. It's ready just in time. Figure it out, Ray. None of this seems to surprise Carpathia, does it? Oh. When he first sauntered in today, he looked like he could hardly contain himself. One more thing. Call it a hunch, but uh, I put something in here just for you. Sit down. What? Come on. Humor me. Oh. Look at this. What? Well, Captain's intercom, so... Reach under your seat with your left hand and run your fingers along the side edge of the bottom of the chair. Yeah, a button. Got it. What's it do? 
I'm going to step back into the cabin now, punch the normal intercom button, and make an announcement. Wait for a count of three, and then push that button under your seat. Make sure your headphones are still on. Hello? Hello, Earl. Yada, yada, yada. One, two, three. Okay, Rayford, that's good. I heard that just fine. That's good voice level for the intercom. Huh. That was strange. I heard every word you said in the headphones. If I did my job right, you'd hear me clear as a bell from all over this plane. Every one of the speakers is also a transmitter. The only monitor is your headphone jack. It's undetectable, and GC bug finders have been all over the cabin. Oh, Earl, you're a genius. I'm not sure what I'll hear, but it's going to be an advantage to know what's going on here. That was my thinking. This is the last of Bruce's printout. Drop me off at the Chicago Bureau office, and then you better check with the Drake and be sure our stuff's still there, okay? Mm -hmm. We'll want to keep that room until we find a place out here. Okay. You know, Loretta's devastated. Hmm. She's really gonna need a lot of help. Yeah, you're right. And what are we gonna do about a funeral for Bruce? I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Do you think you can handle it? I can try. Well, you want to check with the coroner's office. Have the body delivered to a funeral home nearby. With so many casualties, it's gonna be a mess. They'll probably be glad to know at least one body's been claimed. Oh, we're also each gonna need a car. Well, there's a fleet of extra cars among the congregation. Left over from the rapture. I'll just go get one of those. Good. And we need this material reproduced for members of the congregation. Don't you think somebody should read through it? I mean, there's gotta be a lot of personal stuff in there. And you know there'll be direct references to Carpathia and the Tribulation Force? Huh. Can't risk being exposed like that. Yeah, good point. Just let me take it. I'll pour over it between now and Sunday, and by then we can announce we might have something in copied form within a week or so. <laughs> when you're right, you're right. <laughs> oh, you know, Loretta's offered to let us stay with her. Really? She's got that big old house. Oh, man, I don't want to oppose. She'd hardly know we were there. And I think she could use having someone around. It's unlikely I'll be there much of the time. Well, I'm a big girl. I can take care of myself. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, then what do you need me for? I just keep you around because you're cute. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Seriously, though. <laughs> Come on, I'd never forgive myself if I'm in some other country and war comes right here to Mount Prospect. You've forgotten the shelter under the church? Well, I haven't forgotten it. I'm just praying it'll never come to that. I'm gonna get a couple of cell phones. Get five. And don't scrimp. Five? Yeah. I don't know if Loretta would even know how to use one. Well, I'm not thinking of Loretta. I just want to make sure we have a spare. Mm, all right. Well, I'm gonna go talk with Loretta about the second car, and then I'm going to the Drake, and I'll get her stuff. Good, good. I'll see you soon. Okay. That Fortunato guy was pretty ticked about the fly around. <laughs> Fortunato stays ticked. It's his job. I'm switching to autopilot. Stay alert, okay? Yeah. You go into your cabin? No, just sit here. Think, read. Ah, uh, yeah, let me take care of this first. Potentate Carpathia and guests, this is Captain Steele. We've cleared Oklahoma Center and are on time for a touchdown in San Francisco at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll try to get you there as close to that as we can. We expect clear skies and smooth flying. Enjoy the rest of the ride. <laughs> good, good. I trust everyone got enough to eat in Dallas. Huh? Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. yes. We will have an entire flight crew joining us in San Francisco, and we will be well taken care of throughout our flight to Baghdad, and then on to New Babylon. Baghdad. Yes. Yes, I have taken the liberty of flying into Baghdad the remaining three loyal ambassadors. We will pick them up and begin our meetings <coughs> on the short hop from Baghdad to New Babylon. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Steele. If you would excuse us, please. Oh, certainly. I'll, I'll move up front. Very good. Thank you. All right now, gentlemen. Mr. Fortunato remained in Dallas briefly to arrange my next broadcast from there. However, I will do it from here. 
to throw off the enemies of the global community. I, I do need him in on our talks in the night, so we will wait on the ground in San Francisco until he is able to join us. And as soon as we leave San Francisco, we will trigger both LA and the Bay Area. I'm sorry, sir, the Bay Area? Yes, yes, that is San Francisco and the Oakland area. And what do you mean by trigger? Trigger means what it sounds like. By the time we land in Baghdad, more than Washington, New York, and Chicago will have been decimated. Those are just the three North American cities that will suffer the most. So far, only the airport and one suburb have suffered in Chicago. That will change within the hour. And uh, you all already know about London. Mm -hmm. yes. Do you understand the significance of a 100 megaton bomb? <clears throat> well, to put it in perspective, history books tell us that a 20 megaton bomb carries more power than all those dropped in World War II, including those that fell on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The United States of Great Britain had to be taught a lesson, potentate. <laughs> Indeed. And in North America alone, Montreal, Toronto, Mexico City, Dallas, Washington, D.C., New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. These will all become object lessons to those who would oppose us. I'll, I'll be right back. Sure thing, Cap. Amanda. Hey, what is it? Were Buck and Chloe going to stay at the Drake tonight? I don't know. There wasn't time to talk. I can't imagine what other choice they'd have. Well, I'm afraid Chicago is a certain someone's next target. The militia's been wiped out there. Why would... I have to warn them. Do you want to risk a phone call that could be traced? Saving their lives would be worth any risk. Uh, do you need the number? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Pray that I get through. Good afternoon, the Drake Hotel. Yes, yes. Could you connect me with the room of the Williamses? Buck and Chloe. Oh, we have three guests named Williams, sir. Uh, no Buck or Chloe. Oh, right. It, it, it would be Cameron. Sorry, there's no Cameron Williams either. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Ah, uh, Herbert Katz. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, try uh, last name Katz. Katz with a C. No K. K A T Z. Herbert. Yes, yes, that's it. One moment. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, sir. There's no answer. Would you like to leave a message on his voicemail? Yeah, I would, but I'd also like to be sure he gets flagged down for an urgent message if he comes to the front desk, or his wife. We'll certainly do that, sir. Thank you for calling the Drake. Your party is not in. At the sound of the tone, please leave a message. Buck, Chloe, you know who this is. Now, don't take time to do anything. Just get as far away from downtown as you can. Please, trust me on this. As soon as you get this message, get out of Chicago. Left Behind. The dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Busteed. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening. Previously on Left Behind. Sorry to bother you, but you got another urgent phone call. A Dr. Rosenzweig. I'm do Previously on Left Behind. Oh, great to see you. Get away from me, Steel. Now, Rabbi, this way, hurry! Earl, tell me what's got No, Raper, you tell me why I almost got killed. After you murdered his wife and children, you simply I went home. I did not murder his wife and children. I would never harm them. But would you help someone else who wanted to? Do you understand the significance of a 100 megaton bomb? Buck, Chloe, as soon as you get this message, get out of Chicago.
based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 27 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. Hey, boss. Looks like you avoided the war, huh? I came as close as I ever want. Buck, Verna, why didn't you tell us? You've had some urgent messages. Carpathia himself has been trying to reach you. <laughs> There's another from a Rayford Steele. You leave a number? You're returning his call first? I believe I asked you a question. He just said to call your hotel room. Hotel? Why would you want me to call? I would have done it myself, but I didn't know where you were staying. Where are you staying? I don't believe that's any of your business. Well, pardon me. I'll be barring your office temporarily. For how long? As long as I need it. The Drake Hotel. Hi, this is Herb Katz. I need to reach my voicemail, please. I'll connect you, sir. Thank you. You have one message. Far away from downtown as you can. Please trust me on this. As soon as you get this message, get out of Chicago. Sales, this is Tim. Yeah, this is Buck Williams. I just bought a Range Rover a couple of days uh, ago. Mr. Williams! Yeah. Well, I trust everything's all right with the vehicle. Car's fine, but I need to reach my wife and she's driving it. I didn't write the cell phone number down and I need it. <laughs> <laughs> now, that would take a little digging. I gotta tell you here, Tim, this is really rather urgent. I might just develop a sudden case of buyer's remorse if you can't find it. Oh, 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 okay. Hang on, sir. Just, just give me a minute, okay? The mobile customer you're calling is not available at this time. Please try your call again later. Schomburg CM0. <sighs> Come on, Chloe, pick it up. You're not going to believe this. Carpathia's guy is on the line. Uh, look, I'll have to call him back. What? I can't talk to him, okay? Now close the door on the way out. Of all the insolence, does he not understand just what who What is it? This Cameron Williams. His secretary said he would get back to us. Ah, well, give him the number. He would not keep me waiting without good reason. After all, uh, he is trying to cover the story of a lifetime. Would you not agree? The mobile customer you're calling is not a... Sorry to bother you, but you got another urgent phone call. A Dr. Rosenzweig from Israel. Well, uh, tell him I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to call him back, too. You should tell me you're sorry. I'm tempted to patch him through anyway. I'm very sorry, Verna. Now leave me alone. The mobile customer... Ah. Buck, this doctor says it's a matter of life and death. Okay, okay. Hi, I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm in the middle of an urgent matter here. Can I call you back? Cameron, please, don't hang up on me. Israel has been spared the devastation your country has suffered, but <laughs> Rabbi ben Judah's family has been slaughtered. What? It is true, Cameron. His house was burned to the ground. I, I pray he is safe, but no one knows where he is. His family's dead? Are, are you sure? It was a public spectacle, Cameron. I was afraid it would come to this. Oh, why did he have to broadcast his views about the Messiah? Probably because he really believes it. I respect him. He is my friend. But the religious zealots here hate a person who believes in Jesus as Messiah. Mm. Cameron, he needs our help. Worse yet, I have not been able to get through to Nikolai. Heim, do me a huge favor. Leave Nikolai out of this. But Cameron, the most powerful man in the world, has pledged his protection. Surely he will step in and preserve... Uh, doctor, I'm begging you. Trust me on this. Leave Nikolai out of it. Listen, I'll have to call you back. I have family members in trouble myself. Forgive me, Cameron. Get back to me as soon as you can. Right. Someone called, but since you don't want to be bothered... Verna, I don't have time for this. If you must know, it was your wife. What? I told her you were probably on the line with Carpathia or Rosen's... Ah! ah where was she calling from? I don't know. Said she'd just wait for your call on her car phone. Ah, great. Don't you want the number? I have it, thank you. Look, 
I'm not your secretary. You can take your own calls from now on. Verna, I am coming across this desk to kick that door shut, and you had better not be in the Williams, way. Williams, you're coming unglued! Get out! Buck? Chloe, Chloe, where are you? I'm on my way out of Chicago. I went to the Drake, but they stopped me at the desk because Dad left me this message yeah, that Yeah, yeah, was... I, I know. Buck, it was something in his voice. I didn't even go to our room. Good girl. But uh, your laptop and all your clothes... Well, don't worry about it. Your dad sounded serious. Yeah, like it was... Uh, oh, no. What is it? I got a cop behind me. Yeah. I made a U-turn. I'm sure I was speeding. I probably went through a light or two. Chloe, I don't know. Chloe, Chloe, listen to me. It's easier to ask forgiveness than permission. You want me to try to outrun him? You'll probably save his life. There's only one reason your dad would stay to get out of Chicago as fast as possible. Okay, Buck. <laughs> Pray for me. Here goes nothing. I'll stay on the line. I need both hands to drive. Hit the speaker button. I think I see an exit ramp. Well, how close is it? took out the electricity everywhere. Wow, look at that. What's going on? Chicago's getting bombed. Is that militia or GC? Whoever it is, they're not kidding around. Chicago should be under retaliatory attack even as we speak. Thank you for your part in this, gentlemen, and for the strategic non-use of radioactive fallout. I have many loyal employees in that area. No need to lose them to radiation, to make my point. Would you care to see the latest coverage, Potentate? Ah, yes. Thank you. A real attack on Chicago is underway. The attack began moments ago and seems to be concentrated on the downtown area. Magnificent Mile has been called. You can see this here... Rayford, you were right. Listen... Would you go to Chicago for me? Do you think I'd be safe? There's no radiation. How do you know that? If I can get permission from Carpathia to have you fly out of San Francisco, will you go? I'll do anything, Rayford. You know that. Good. Now, listen carefully. If you can't get an immediate flight, and I mean before this plane leaves the ground again, you must reboard the Condor. Do you understand? I understand, but why? Please don't ask questions. Just get an immediate flight to Milwaukee if I can get it cleared. If the plane isn't airborne before we are... What? Just be sure. I couldn't bear losing you. Sir, may I have a moment? Oh, certainly, Captain. Oh, terrible news from Chicago, is it not? Yes, sir, it, it is. In fact, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Huh. You know I have family in that area. Yes. Yeah. And I hope they are all safe. Sir, I was wondering if it would be possible for my wife to deplane in San Francisco and head back to check on my people. Well, I would be happy to have my staff check on them. Give me their addresses. I, um, I'd really feel better if she could be there with them. Hmm. As you wish, Captain Steele. Chicago approach, Global 27 Lima, out of 21 for 12, over. 27 Lima, Chicago approach, airspace is closed. You must divert. Uh, come again, Chicago? This airspace is closed. You must divert. Uh -oh. Here we go again. Uh, that's a Rogers, Chicago. We're canceling the IFR. Can you recommend an alternate? Global 27 Lima, repeat, Chicago airspace is closed. Chicago approach, we copy. Can you recommend an alternate? Global 27 Lima, airspace is closed. I strongly suggest you divert. No world? Something's wrong here. Let's do a little experiment. Hey, Chicago approach, radio check, over. The radio check is 5x5. Five five. Is that for 27 Lima? 27 Lima. At 27 Lima, radar contact has been lost. Check your transponder for us if you can, sir. We'll need that back ASAP. 27 Lima, Chicago approach. Please respond. So if you were trying not to shoot down one of your own, you would use a radio guided missile. Now, 
if I could just get rid of that heat signature. Carpathia, you devil! Who's got a cell phone I can borrow? Anybody? Here. Battery's fresh. Vernon. Don't look so shocked. Well, thanks. Hey, I need to borrow a car. I'm heading home to check on my wife and my kid. Yeah, which way? Homewood. Well, I need to get north. Anybody going to Mount Prospect? Um, I'll take you. Uh, Vernon, but you live in the city, don't you? Until about five minutes ago. Well, maybe your place survived. Cameron, if that big blast was nuclear, none of us will last the week. Uh, listen, Vernon, if we can get to Mount Prospect, I know a place you can stay. Come on. I'm glad you called. <laughs> Been trying New York, but nobody's there. Yeah, we're in a real mess. I, uh, I got the clothes on my back. That's about it. Uh, we miss you out here, son. Thanks, thanks. Look, I don't have much time to talk, Dad. Uh, just called to make sure everybody was okay. Your brother and I doing fine. He's still grieving the loss of his family, of course. Uh, Dad, the wheels are coming off this country. You're not going to really be all right until you consider... Uh, Cameron, let's not get into that again, okay? I know what you believe. And if it gives you comfort... It gives me little comfort right now. It kills me that I was too late coming to the truth. I, I have already lost too many loved ones. I don't want to lose you two. <laughs> You're not going to lose me, Buck. Nobody seems to want to even attack us out here. Almost feel neglected. Dad, millions are dying. Don't be glib about this. Chloe was near downtown when it was hit. Is she okay? Oh, I don't know. I'm headed there right now. Uh, I'm sure she'll be all right. By the way, still looking forward to meeting her someday. Yeah, sorry about that. It's just been too crazy. Look, Dad, find a good church there. Find someone who can explain what's going on. I can't think of anybody more qualified than you, son. Hope things turn out okay. Is there any possible way someone could detect that we are airborne during the broadcast? None, sir. Oh, good. I'll tell the captain we're ready. Yes? Captain, the potentate is ready. Let's proceed with the air patch through Dallas as discussed. The uplink expects us in three minutes. You got it. Loretta's a little eccentric, but she'll take good care of you. Cameron, level with me. Why are you doing this? <laughs> hey, you let me use your phone, right? Phone for lodging? A bit lopsided, isn't it? Seen our world recently? We haven't exactly been best chums here. Well, Verna, for what it's worth, I haven't made much of an effort. For that, I apologize. <laughs> this is no time to be squabbling. Oh, here you go. This is it. Right here. Oh, and that's Loretta. Loretta, hi. Loretta, this is Verna Z. We work together at Global Week. No introductions, Cameron. Get back in the car. He's got a wife to find. Hi. Uh, thanks for opening your home to me. I arranged a car for you, Buck. It should be here in a few minutes. Thanks. Uh, I'll take Vernus to save time. Fine with me. And keep the phone as long as you need to. Come on. We'll get you set. Do you live downtown? Yeah, I have a place. At least I used to. Brothers and sisters of the global community, I am speaking to you with the greatest heaviness of heart I have ever known. I am a man of peace who has been forced to retaliate against international terrorists. Yes, Mr. Williams. I would tell him you return his call. He's conducting an international broadcast just now. Right. Sorry. Uh, let me give you my number. By now, you must know that two former members of the exclusive Global Community Executive Council have revolted against my administration, and another carelessly allowed militia forces in his region to do the same. These forces were led by the now late President of the United States, Gerald Fitzhugh. As soon as we land, I'm going to get the aft door open and get you off this plane as fast as possible. Okay. And I mean as soon as we land, even before post-flight. Be ready. All right. Then I need you to make sure whatever flight you find is off the ground before we are. But why? Trust me. Then when you get to Chicago, call me on my sad phone and let me know Chloe and Buck are all right. And the destruction of great populated cities in North America and around the world 
were the work of the rebellion. There are no more plans for counterattacks by global community forces. We will respond only as necessary and pray that our enemies understand that they have no future. They cannot succeed. They will be utterly destroyed. I know that in a time of global war such as this, most of us live in fear and grief. I am with you in your grief, but my fear has been overcome by confidence that the majority of the global community is together, heart and soul, against the enemies of peace. Rest assured that as we reconstruct and reorganize, we will enjoy the greatest prosperity and the most wonderful home this earth can afford. May we all work together for the common goal. All right, the stairs are down. When you get to the ground, go straight to the terminal. There's a crew room on the ground floor. Use this pass card. Find your way up to the terminal. I checked with operations. There's a flight to Milwaukee leaving in 20 minutes. Now make sure you're on it. I love you. I love you, too. Be careful. Captain Steele, what's going on? Passenger needed to connect. Can we get on with post-flight? I want to switch places with McCollum as soon as I can. No problem. Let's get on with it. Where are you headed tonight? What possible business is that of yours? Just curious. Given the way the country is having a few problems right now... Captain Steele, to... you're being summoned by the ground crew. I'll handle it, sir, just as soon as we wrap up our post-flight check. Just letting you know they're waiting. You realize that with a new plane, there's a good bit we need to be sure of before we go Trans-Pacific. As soon as possible, Captain. We have a full flight crew waiting, and we want to take care of the potentate's needs as quickly as we can. Safety first. I'll be with you in a moment, ma'am. I'm trying to connect with the Milwaukee flight. Is this the right gate? Yes, but we're a little behind just now. If you'll take a seat, we'll call you when we're ready. But you're supposed to leave in five minutes. Uh, there's a delay, ma'am. If you'll have a seat... How long? I need to know how long. Uh, only another 15 or 20 minutes. Now, please, have a seat and we'll call you. Excuse me, sir. Mr. Fortunato is joining us for the next leg of the flight? Yes, he is. He left Dallas half an hour after we did. He should be boarding any minute. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Just trying to calculate our departure scenario. Hey, the road's closed, boys! Verna. Verna, hi. This is Buck. I'm on Lakeshore Drive, still looking for Chloe. The news says it's all shut down. Yeah, well, I took some liberties. Uh, when you talked with Chloe, did she give you any indication where she might be? Not that I can think of. Uh, yeah, well, she knew to get out of the city. But Verna, do you think she might have taken the Kennedy? If I wanted to get out fast, I wouldn't. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, I'm coming up on... Oh, wow! What is it? I gotta go! Hey, idiot! Hey, what's what going is your eyes? Roads closed, where are you flying? Freeze! Police! Wait, wait, hang on. Hey, stay where you are! Hands where I can see them! Okay, okay, I'm just rolling I down... I said hands where I can see them! All right! Out of the car and lie flat on the ground, now! Okay, okay. Ah. Hands behind your head! Ah. Any guns, knives, needles? No, just two sets of IDs. So, which one are you, uh, Williams or uh, Katz? I'm Cameron Williams, publisher Global Community Weekly. Oh, I report directly to the potentate. The phony idea is to help me get into unsympathetic countries. If you really report to Carpathia, you have a level 2A clearance, and I don't see... Uh, uh, okay, I, I guess I do. <sighs> Do you know carrying phony 2A security clearance is punishable by death? Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of that. And it's not phony. All right. Well, so, uh, Mr. Uh, Williams, uh, where are you headed in such an all-fired hurry? The Drake. Uh, you are aware that most of Michigan Avenue is uh, gone? Including the Drake? Uh, I don't know about that, but it can't be in too good of a shape by now. Well, if I walk up over that rise, am I going to be able to get onto Michigan Avenue? Uh, there's no guarantees you'll get past the guards. Trying to find someone? Yeah. Yeah, my wife. Mm. Well, good luck. 
Best bet's that clearance card. I hope it's legit for your sake. Condor 216, Frisco Brown. That Milwaukee flight is still delayed. Over. Roger, ground. Any guesses on how long it'll be? Negative, Condor. I'll keep you informed. Roger that. Thanks a bunch. Uh, yeah, 216, Butler Ramp Service. Go ahead, Butler. 216, uh, what's the hold up here? The service order came in as a red expedite. We got a few housekeeping chores and a learning curve here, Butler. Plus, we're switching crews. I'll call you in a second. Learning curve. Uh, Captain, it's going to take us a while to top off the tanks, and we can't start until you pull the aft stairs into the locked position. Captain, uh, we're ready to refuel. I realize that. Hang tight, okay? How did that loser land this job? Miss, uh, are you ready to board? It'll be a few more minutes, but I can get your seat assignment set up now. Do you prefer aisle or window? How long do you think it'll be before we board? Has anyone approached you, asked you to carry anything on board? Look at me! How long will it be? Ray? Oh, hey. Welcome aboard, Mac. Good to see you. Everything okay with you? As good as can be expected during a world war. Huh. Ain't that the truth. Look, it's been a long day for me. I'd appreciate a little shut-eye once we get her in the air. My pleasure, Cap. I'll just camp out in the cockpit. Not quite confident enough to leave her yet. Fine by me. Captain, excuse me. Mr. Fortunato has arrived. Oh. We are ready for takeoff. Yeah, thanks. Uh, something wrong, Cap? Ray? God, I pray for Verna right now. You know the situation. If she finds out I'm a Christian, it could mean my life. So, I put that in your hands. Working her life through me, through Loretta. And please. Oh, God. Please. In all this confusion, help me find Chloe. Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustee. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening. Previously on Left Behind. Sorry to bother you, but you got another urgent phone call. A Dr. Rosenzweig. Heim, do me a huge favor. Leave Nikolai out of this. But Cameron. I think I see an exit ramp. Well, how close is it? <laughs> Be ready. Right. Now I need you to make sure whatever flight you find is off the ground before we are. But why? Trust me. Please help me find Chloe. I could just get rid of that heat signature. 27 Lima, Chicago approach. Carpathia, you... Based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series... Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 28 of the dramatic audio edition of 
left behind. Verna, hi, it's Buck. I hate to tell you this, but you're going to need a new car. What? Well, I had a little accident. Are you all right? <laughs> uh, well, nothing big, but it's going to be tough to get it fixed for several days. Hey, how about I replace it with a better car? Can't argue with that. Yeah, okay, I'll work out the details. Cameron, I just got off the phone with the office. <laughs> there were a few messages they had. From Chloe? No, sorry. Dr. Rosenzweig called again from Israel. Okay. Some guy called claiming to be your father-in-law, and there's one from a Miss White. Miss White? She says she's flying into Mitchell Field in Milwaukee at midnight. Need oh. the ride. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I got it. Okay. How are you going to pick her up without a car? Oh, I'll worry about that later. What about Chloe? Any luck? Uh, it's a real mess down here. Where are you? Well, what used to be Michigan Avenue. Cameron, you may need to prepare yourself. No. I can't think that way. I won't. I'm not saying your wife is gone. Just that it's a possibility. I got to go, Verna. I'll call you later, okay? Uh, that's a Roger. Thanks for the update. First smile I've seen from you all day, Rafer. First reason to smile all day. Captain, not everyone is seated. Uh, we're number two to go. Can you handle it? Sir, the offending party is Mr. Carpathia himself. <laughs> well, I don't have jurisdiction over him. Neither do you. You've given the instructions, correct? Yes, sir. Well, then strap in. Let the potentate worry about himself. If you say so, Captain. Condor 216, you're clear for takeoff. Right turn heading 270, contact departure 121.8. Heading is 270, contact departure 216, roger. Good day. Potentate, would you like to sit down? Mm. Uh, thank you, Leon. I am fine. Mac, I got an urge to see what this plane can do. Ready? And you are, Gavin. Yeehaw! Ride of cowboy! <laughs> Oh, oh, my goodness. Uh, potentate, are, are you all right? I... I am fine. It's my own fault. No, I will be fine. <laughs> Chloe. Cameron, it's Verna. The office said Chloe just called. Did they give her this number? No, they didn't know you had my phone. Uh, I'm trying to call her now. Line's busy. Listen, where are you? Oh, I'm in Michigan Ave, near what's left of Water Tower Place. Okay. You came down Lakeshore from the north, right? Yeah, right. You need to go the other way on Lakeshore. The other way? That's what she said. Look off the road. Lakeside. Okay, got it. Verna, uh, tell anybody who talks with her she should stay off the phone until I get through. She's going to have to direct me to her. Are you sure you're ready to proceed, sir? Yes. Yes. Are you in contact with command? I have them on the line, potentate. Is there a directive? Mm, oh, yes. Trigger. Very good, sir. It is a go. Yes. Trigger. Whoa! What's going on down there? It looks like GC fighters. Somebody's gonna get smacked. Mm. Holy cow. They just took out the whole airport. Look at that. Direct hit. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Buck, is that you? Chloe. Chloe, are you all right? Chloe, are you hurt? Buck, where are you? Come on. I'm on Lakeshore, north of Chicago Avenue. Thank God. You probably have about another mile to drive. Yeah, no, Chloe. Chloe, I'm on foot. Why are you walking? Chloe, are you hurt? I'm afraid so. Oh. I don't know how long I was unconscious. I'm not oh. even sure how I got here. Hey, Chloe, which is where, exactly? I'm in the strangest place. The airbag deployed and the rover... Listen. Listen, you're gonna have to help me. Tell me what I'm looking for. 
Uh, are you in the open, near the water, anything? I, I think. <laughs> yeah. It looks like, um, in between, um, a tree <gasps> and <this> concrete thing. <laughs> what? Chloe! I was doing about 60 when I thought I saw an exit ramp. And I took it, and that's when I heard the bomb go off. <laughs> keep going, keep going. What, what happened? Maybe it wasn't chasing me at all. I don't know. The bomb went off, and then the traffic it just stopped. I saw the cop slam into this pile of cars. I hope he's okay. <laughs> so where did you wind up? I don't know. Kind of hanging by the seatbelt. There's no emergency lights. There's no people. There's no nothing. There's nobody around you. Nothing. Nobody. I can it's it's good to hear your voice, honey. I was afraid you'd come looking for me. Chloe. Chloe. Chloe, you need to stay awake. Honey. Chloe, stay on the line so I can find you. Okay? Chloe. Chloe! It's dark out here, Chloe. The attack took out all the power. Uh, uh, it's weird trying to find your way around without the streetlights. So, hon, if I'm gonna get to you... Oh, wait, wait. The guardrails are torn up here. Oh, oh, and there's some trees. Chloe, Chloe, are you there? Uh, I'm here. Uh, but I don't... Can you turn on your flashers? I can try. Uh, I have to pull myself up. I have a steering wheel. Oh! Okay. Okay, Corey. I see you. Oh. I'm gonna hang up now, okay? You're about 20 feet above me. Oh, oh my. Chloe, be careful. Don't move too quickly. I'm gonna come up and get you, okay? Just hang on. Okay. Stand on traffic, Reynolds. Kevin, this is Rayford Steele on the Condor. Yes, sir. How can I help you? Earl Halliday. Do you have a status report on his flight to Chicago? Uh, yeah, it's not good, Captain. We followed him into the airspace near Chicago, then lost contact. There was an attack in that area. We're afraid he might have been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Is there any chance he might have gotten through, landed somewhere else? Don't think so, Captain. They found some Lear wreckage in the area. We're pretty sure it's Earl's plane. Hun, Chloe, if you can, very slowly turn those flashers off, okay? Let's not draw attention to ourselves. I'm almost there. Okay. Okay. There. Hun, can you reach the ignition? Yeah. Good. All right. Just very slowly turn the... Turn the key halfway and put the window all the way down. Try. Good. Uh, it's kind of painful to move. Oh. I'm not sure what's broken and what's not. Okay. All right. Uh, uh -oh. Okay. Try to brace yourself somehow and get loose, all right? Then then you can stand on the passenger side window and... I can't. Oh. Okay, I, I can get the window, though. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Okay. All right, here. Here. Give me your free hand. Hang on. I'm giving you my right hand. My left side's killing me. Okay. All right. Does it hurt if I hold your arm like this? Ah. Uh, oh. Not too much. Oh. Okay, try uh, Try to put your right foot on the passenger side window. Uh, oh, man. Oh, you're not bleeding anywhere, are you? I don't think so. Okay. 
Sounds like besides a couple breaks and bruises, you're gonna be okay. Okay. If we can get you out of here. If you can get the door open, I can probably mm. climb up next to you. Okay. <laughs> now, hon, and listen to me. I'm, I'm gonna open the door. Put your foot there, okay? Uh, I'll try. Whoa. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. We gotta get you oh. down. Wouldn't okay. It, wouldn't it be easier uh, to go up? Uh, it's a lot shorter uh, to the top of the road. Okay. okay. Yeah, you're right. All right, can you make it? Whatever we do, we better do it quick. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, I got you. Come on. I got Stand it. up and, and grab the top of the wall. I got it. I'm going to push. Uh, now, uh, now push with your good leg, okay? Uh, okay. Oh, uh, 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 I made it. Oh, good. I got it. But give me your hand. I can't reach it. Well, get out of here. You're going to be run. Uh, 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 Hey, Chloe? Fuck! Stay there a sec. I want to try something. I don't believe it. So how you doing? I'm starting to get stiff a little bit. I can't believe this thing still runs perfectly. Probably saved your life. Worth every dime. Hello? Loretta, it's Buck. Always safe. Oh, thank God. She's banged up, though. I'd like to get her checked out as soon as possible. Could you call around and find a doctor in the church? I'll see if I can find someone. Good. We're on our way. I gotta check something here. Stay there, Chloe. We'll help you out. What are you looking for? Good. It's still here. A little spread around, though. What? Well, Bruce's manuscript. Oh, the sat phone should be back there, too. Stuff yeah, was here. flying around all over the place. <laughs> yeah, including you. Okay, now. Easy does it. Uh, Chloe, as soon as we get you inside, I'm gonna need to get back to Carpathia. Oh. Oh, Captain Steele. Everything all right? Yes, sir. Just taking a little walk. Oh, terrible about San Francisco, wasn't it? Yeah. Your wife made it to her flight, I hope. Yes, I, I think she did. Oh, good. Good. Potentate, you should see this. Oh, yes. Thank you for your service, Captain Steele. Uh, this is Rayford Steele. Daddy? Oh, oh Chloe. Hi. Thank God. Are you all right? Yeah. Had a little accident, oh. though. I just, uh... Wanted you to know that you saved my life. What do you mean? Well, I got that message you left at the Drake. If I'd have gone to our room, I probably wouldn't be here right now. And Buck's okay? Yeah, he's fine. He's a little scratched up from the tree. The, the tree? It was a long story. He's late returning a, a call that you know who. So he's trying to get through. Well, I'm glad you're okay. I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay. Bye, Dad. Bye. Sir, it is Williams from Chicago. Ah, put him on the speakerphone. Ha! Huh? Cameron, my friend! Huh? I've been worried about you. We're still in one piece here, sir. The office escaped the bombing. Good, good. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm curious about coverage. What is happening there in Chicago? Well, the damage is downtown, Michigan Avenue. It's total annihilation. Yes, yes. Devastation, I, I understand. The body count is going to be high. Oh, a tragedy. Cameron... Would it be possible for you to get to New Babylon within the next few days? Actually, there's an important story I'm following in Israel. Ah, I see. Israel. Uh, the so-called holy lands were spared again, were they not? Oh, well, that's what I hear. Mm -hmm. I would like pooled coverage of high-level meetings in Baghdad and New Babylon. I would expect to have your pen on it, but Steve Plank, your old friend, can run point. You and he can work together to see that the appropriate coverage is carried in our print media. Huh? Well, I want to make sure we cover the personal side. Uh, so many people have experienced a loss. Yes, of course, of course. We are all grieving. Uh, you will keep in touch then, hmm? and I will hear from you from Israel. I'll be available any time, sir. Good. Oh, 
Oh, good morning, bud. Did you sleep well? Mm, morning. Uh, not much. It feels good to have people in this house again. Y'all can stay as long as you need. Thanks. Uh, Amanda said she'll probably sleep until noon. Then she offered to take care of Bruce's arrangements. Oh, my. Thank you for sparing me. That's okay. I don't think I could handle that right now. Well, she's glad she can help. How's Chloe? Ankle cast bothered her all night. She's conked out right now, though. Good. Uh, Loretta, Verna didn't cause any problems, did she? Not at all. Why? She didn't ask too many questions? No. Why? Mm. Uh, no reason. Yeah, she can just be energetic. I see. Like I said, it's nice to have company. Listen, I'm headed to the church. Anything you need? Uh, no. And thanks for everything, Loretta. Kenrich. Ken, hi. Buck Williams. I'm the guy from Global Weekly. Yeah, I remember you, Buck. Flew you to, where was it? New York or close to there? Right, right. Look, I know you're busy and probably don't need the business right I'm now. I'm down to one jet. Well... You know I'm in a big, fat expense account and can pay more than anybody else. Yeah, you're in luck. I'm available. Huh. Planes at Palwaukee. Charging two bucks a mile and a thousand dollars a day for downtime. Where are we going? Israel. And I have to be back here Saturday night at the latest. Ooh, jet lag city. It's best to fly that way early evening and land there the next day. Meet me at Palwaukee at 7 and we got a deal. Captain? Hey, Ray, wake up. Sorry. You got company. Hmm? Captain Steele, we're not entirely sure of security in New Babylon. No one expects us to land in Baghdad. Let's maintain with the New Babylon Tower that we're on our way directly there. When we pick up our other three ambassadors, we may just stay on the ground for a few hours until our security forces have had a chance to clear New Babylon. Now, will that affect your meeting schedule? I don't see how that concerns you. Sorry. We can easily meet on the plane while it is being refueled. You will keep the air conditioning on. Sure. I'll stay in the cockpit or in my quarters and keep out of your way. See that you do. I'm putting together those five laptops right now. I figure just a little over 20,000. For all five? No, that's 20K a piece. Oh. Is that a problem? No, Donnie. Uh, not at all. Uh, can I have them when I get back from a trip, say on Sunday? Absolutely. I guarantee it. I have time to work on that after you get better. Can I get you anything? Orange juice? I'm fine, thanks. Hey. Hey. How are you? <laughs> I'll leave you two alone. I'm off to make the arrangements for Bruce. Oh, if I can help, give me a call, Amanda. Thanks. Now, you get better, sweetie. Thank you. So, are you gonna leave me too? Oh, believe me. I don't want to. How are you feeling? Like I've been up a tree. Oh. <laughs> Buck, how are you going to find Dr. Ben Judah? No one else can. Yeah, I know. Rosenzweig's been cryptic, but uh, he seems to know Sion is alive and safe. I just hope he keeps Carpathia out of the picture until I can get there. If they find him before you do... I don't want to the... think about it. The big question mm -hmm. is, how long will it be before all of us are hiding? Mm -hmm. How long before we all head for the shelter under the church? If you've completed your post-flight checks, we will exit together. I will bring the three other ambassadors on board within the hour. International aviation rules prohibit me from flying again for 24 hours. Steele, you know that international rules on everything are embodied in the man sitting on this plane when he wants to go to New Babylon. You will fly him to New Babylon. And if I refuse? Don't be silly. Let me remind you, Leon, that once I've gotten a break, I'll want to familiarize myself with more details regarding the plane. Just stay out of our way. And I would appreciate it if you would refer to me as Mr. Fortunato. That means a lot to you, does it, Leon? Don't push me, Steve. As I'm the only one who can fly this plane, I would appreciate it if you would call me Captain Steele. Cameron, I have finally talked live with our uh, mutual friend. He sounded so empty and, and hollow that it, it moved me to my very soul. Well, what did he say? It was a strange message, Cameron. He simply said that you would know whom to talk with about his whereabouts. That I would know? That's what he said, Cameron, that you would know. Do you suppose he means N.C.? 
No. No. Haim, I I'm still praying you're keeping him out of this. I am, Cameron, but it is not easy. Who else can intercede for the life of my friend? I'm frantic that the worst will happen, and I will feel responsible. I'm heading there shortly. Can you arrange a car for me? I will meet you at the airport myself. Somehow we, we will get you where you need to go. Now, you're missing the point. Go ahead. The fact that the retaliation was so swift and so decisive, I believe, actually saved lives. How can you say that? Even with millions of us, millions dead, the water supplies are contaminated across the world. It could have been much worse if the potentate hadn't used the full force of the global community power. Everybody on the news seems to have the same opinion. With Carpathia's control of the media, did you expect anything different? Not really. We are getting that signal now. <sighs> Look, uh, why don't you hang loose here? I need to make a call and head back to the plane. My guess is they won't want to move on for a few more hours. Sure thing, Cap. We have come through a difficult time. Hey, wait up. I want to go. <laughs> you sure you're up to it? <sighs> yeah, wait. One second. Scooch. Uh, okay. Okay. I hate to say it, but we never know when we might not see each other again. Uh, a little dramatic, aren't you? But you respect her feelings. I had to kiss my husband goodbye in front of the Antichrist. You think that gives me confidence about whether I'll ever see him again? Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. With I'm sorry. From this Speak of the devil. Is that you? Uh, Jean, this is Rayford Steele. Hugh, I don't have anything to say to you. Earl told me what you did. Some kind of friend you are. I, I talked with her and explained what happened. You nearly got him killed! That's what happened! It was a misunderstanding. Right! Well, I'll hear his side of it when he gets home. Misunderstanding. You should be ashamed of yourself. Jean, there's no easy way to tell you this. What? What's happened now? I'm uh, not sure how it happened. Uh, no! I don't believe you! Ur Earl's dead. No! No! I'm sorry. I hate you, Rayford Steele! I hate you! Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustee. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening. Last time on Left Behind. Trigger. Very good, sir. Mayday! Mayday! That's the San Francisco Tower! Can you turn on your flashers? I can't Oh, you're about 20 feet above me. They found some Lear wreckage in the area. We're pretty sure it's Earl's plane. Buck, how are you going to find Dr. Ben Judah? No one else can. I would appreciate it if you would refer to me as Mr. Fortunato. That means a lot to you, doesn't it? Leon? Do you suppose he means him? I'm, I'm still praying you're keeping him out of this. I hate you, Rayford Steele! Based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents... Episode 29 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. Captain Steele, you 
are staying on the plane? Um, mm -hmm. I told Leon, uh, Mr. Fortunato, I would head up front. Still getting up to speed on the new plane. Ah. Potentate, we should move our meeting to the center cabin, don't you think? I'm heading back to the cockpit. Oh, yes, it's fine. Take as much time as you need, Captain. You are right, Leon. It will be more uh, comfortable for us. Hmm? Uh, we'll use the conference table. I have the charts you requested in there as well, sir. Good. Gentlemen, please follow me this way. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. 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 Then we can get down to business. Dr. Rosenzweig sends his most heartfelt and loyal greetings to you, potentate. Uh, there is an urgent personal matter he wants me to share with you. Is it of a confidential nature? I don't believe so, sir. It concerns Zion ben Judah. The scholar who has created such a stir with his controversial message. Apparently his wife and two stepchildren have been murdered by zealots. And ben Judah himself is in hiding. I should have expected no better. I could not agree with you more, potentate. It is quite irresponsible of those zealots to let him slip away. Yes, so what is it that Rosenzweig wants? Hmm? He wants you to intercede on Ben Judah's behalf. <laughs> with whom? <laughs> I would imagine with the zealots. All right, all right, gentlemen. Calm down, please. Well, perhaps what I should do is accede to Dr. Rosenzweig's request and speak directly with the head of the zealot faction. I would give him my full blessing and perhaps supply him some technology that would help him find and eliminate his prey. Very good, sir. Let me tell you this, gentlemen. A person such as Ben Judah is much more dangerous to our cause than an old fool like Rosenzweig. Ben Judah is more than a scholar. He has the ability to sway people. He wants to fill his countrymen's minds with this blather about the Messiah. <coughs> people would believe anything. And when they do, they are dangerous. Ben Judah's time is short. And I will not stand in the way of his demise. Stay down, Rabbi. The river's narrow here. We are close to the shore. Where are you taking me, Mike? Trust me. You will be very hard to find where we are going. And if you are found, those who find you will encounter a great deal of resistance. I must get in touch with my friend Heim. I must tell him I am alive. He knows you are alive. But I must call him. In time, Rabbi. Must swiftly. Well, the people are most vulnerable, hmm? Look, they will look to the global community for help, and we will give it to them. Oh, I tell you, I was so excited, so full of ideas last night. Together, we have moved to a one-world currency. We are close to a cashless society. Now, upon your return to your respective areas, we will simultaneously initiate a 10-cent tax on all electronic money transfers. And along with the tax on oil and gasoline, I estimate that will net the global community a trillion dollars each year. Incredible! <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, and with the tax on each region's gross national product, that will bring... Oh, gentlemen. Gentlemen. Please. The expressions on your faces. Gentlemen. We are building a global community. Pain is part of the process. The devastation and death of this war will blossom into a utopia unlike any the world has ever seen. And your countries and regions will benefit, and you, personally, most of all. Buck, you just go ahead and make yourself comfortable. It's gonna be a while till we get to Tel Aviv. Yeah, if I get bored, I'll just play with a few of these buttons. So what's new with the Jet Setting Magazine writer? What's it been, two years? Oh, well, lots happened since then. Changes. Uh, my opinion about the vanishings, for instance. Hmm. Hey, weren't you the one who thought it was aliens? Hey, I had no more of a clue than the next guy. I was just trying to make sense of it like everybody else. The one that convinced me came from a pilot. Really? Yeah, it worked for Pan Con. The way he explained it, well, it made the most sense. 
Yeah. We got time. Let me hear it. Good enough. How much do you know about the Bible? Intelligence sources became aware of the attack on New York by the American militia. Their leader, President Fitzhugh, was killed in our retaliatory attack on Washington, D.C. Leon? Yes, sir. Now, with the appropriation of the Alaskan oil field here, Global Community now controls two-thirds of the world's oil supply. We will steadily raise the price of oil, which will further finance our plans. Gentlemen, I will soon be appointing leaders to replace the three ambassadors from the regions that turned against us. That will bring the Global Community Administration back to its full ten regions. And you will no longer be my ambassador. What? What? I don't understand. <laughs> Quiet. You will now be referred to as sovereign heads of your own kingdoms. Yes. You will each continue to report directly to me. And your loyalty will be rewarded. <laughs> Does that seem as nuts to you as your space aliens did to me? Uh, not really. You'd be amazed at the number of people I've run into who think you're right. i tell you one thing. If I am right, people who don't believe are going to be in worse trouble than they ever could imagine. I can't think of worse trouble than we're in right now. You know, I used to apologize. I tried to make sure I wasn't coming on too strong, but now, well, I hope you'll check out what I've said. If what you say is true, the end isn't that far off. Just a few years. Exactly. And, uh, if a fellow was going to check it out, he'd better get to it. You know, Ken, I couldn't have said it better myself. The world has had enough of an antagonistic press. Even I, who have no designs on personal gain, have been attacked and criticized by editorialists. The global community's ability to purchase all the major media outlets has virtually eliminated that. While freedom of speech and of the press may once have been necessary to keep evil dictators from taking over, such opposition is unnecessary now. I want to tell you something, and I want you to listen very carefully. The same control we have over all media, we also need over industry and commerce. Ownership is not the issue, control is. Within the next few months, we shall announce unanimous decisions, allowing us to control business, education, health care, and even the way your individual kingdoms choose their leaders. Democracy and voting will be suspended. Each of you will tell your subjects this was your idea, you raised it, you sought support for it, and you prevailed. In public, I will reluctantly accede to your wishes, and we will all win. Potentate Carpathia, I know I am merely your aide and not a member of this august body, uh, however, may I make a suggestion? Oh, why, yes, Leon, why, we all value your input. Uh, I was just thinking, sir, that you and your colleagues might consider suspending popular voting as inefficient and not in the best interests of the people, at least temporarily. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Fortunato, I, uh, I do not know... Gentlemen, how do you feel people would respond to such a controversial proposal? Hmm? Yes, yes, you must consider it. It only makes sense, Potentate. I agree, really? you must. Yes, yes, this is the correct plan yeah. of action. Very do you not yes. see, Potentate? Yes. What you have done with the media is a model we also need over industry uh, and commerce. Yes. <sighs> but we would have to own all business. That is oh. not necessary. You must simply control it and lead it. Well, I thank you very much for your input, gentlemen. It has been most stimulating and inspiring. I, I will, I will take all these matters to heart and let you know soon.
So they've been trying to kill this Ben Judah guy all along. Yeah. There have been threats against him almost every day. But from what I've heard, the last few weeks have been real quiet. Of course, now... Yeah, but he's been protected by... What'd you call those two? The witnesses? Yeah. I, I read something about them. Some kind of rally? Yeah, Teddy Kolick Stadium. They appeared on the platform with the rabbi. Come nigh and listen to the chosen servant of the Most High God. He is among the first of the 144,000 who shall go forth from this and many nations. Those who come against him before the due time shall surely die. It was incredible, the number of people, the way it all came together. Does your Bible say anything about the future of these witness guys? Well, they're protected now. Protected? <laughs> Supernatural. You've seen the news? Oh, yeah. Eventually, they'll be attacked and killed. If I'm right, that won't be for another year and a half. And you learned all this from your friend Bruce? Yeah. Hmm. Must be uh, tough without him around. You can't imagine. Remember, no smiles. This is a grave, sad day. Appropriate expressions, please. A uh, potentate, apparently there is a surprise waiting for you. You know I do not like surprises. It seems your fiancé is waiting with the crowd. <sighs> that is totally inappropriate. Would you like me to have her removed? No. No, I am not sure how she might react. We certainly do not want a scene. Yes, sir. <sighs> I do hope she knows how to act. This is not her strength. Pilot and co-pilot first. Let's go. Ambassadors, remember your positions. When we are on the tarmac, you will stand exactly as you are now, flanking the potentate. The flight crew will be on the other side of the V. Captain Steele, this is your position in the picture. Mr. Fortunato, if it's okay with you, McCollum and I would prefer to bow out of the photograph. Is that okay? Not unless you'd like to go against the wishes of the potentate himself. Please, do what you're told. After you, Ray. Please, please, re release her. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. No, this, this is totally inappropriate. What's the matter? I was happy to see you. This is a solemn occasion. Act like an adult. Judas, you will stay by my side. Oh, it is so good to be back where I belong. It is wonderful to reunite with loved ones. My fiancé is, is overcome with grief, as I am at the horrible events that began a few hours ago. This is a difficult time in which we live. And yet our horizons have never been wider, our challenges so great. Now that may seem an incongruous statement in light of the tragedy and devastation we have all suffered. But we are all destined for prosperity if we commit to standing together. We will stand against any enemy of peace. Is he safe? That is all I need to know. He is overcome with grief, but he is safe for the moment. He asks about you, Jaime. They have interrogated me. The police. They accuse me. And I can take that, but the police are implying... You will not say this to the rabbi. They imply the deaths of his family may have been his own plan. That's preposterous. The authorities. And the only thing worse is the press. They hound me at every step. I killed the man last night, Hank. You, you what? He came for the boat. He said he was looking for someone. I discovered he was looking for the rabbi. Perhaps he was the deliverer you talk about. This was no deliverer. This was an enemy of the Almighty. God has spoken to the witnesses. He is sending someone, a person who knows the rabbi, who knows the witnesses. The deliverer will understand the prophecies and will be a believer in Christ. Michael, for our friend's sake, I hope you are right. The press. Do not let them see you. I will take them the other way toward my car. Shalom. Please, 
Excuse me, please. So have you seen Rabbi Van Did you witness the attack? Has he phoned you? Has he made any contact please. at all? Please. I have not seen him or talked with him. Other than that, I have no comment. Oh, well, where is he now? No, do you have any idea? I do you sorry, deny please. any involvement? What do you say about the accusations that the killings were planned by Dr. Ben Judah? Are you sure? Hey, don't worry about me, buddy. I'll hang her this baby and find a place to crash till you get back. Always wanted to tour this country. And it's nice to just be in a place that hasn't been blown to bits. Yeah, well, don't stray too far. I can't be sure when I'll be able to... You can reach me through the airport. When you're ready, call. I'll be checking in there. Okay. Thanks, Ken. Hope you find what you're looking for. Cameron. Cameron. Doctor. Doctor, it is so good to see you. Doctor, listen, I only have a few days. What can you tell me? Do you know what Sion is? Cameron, it's so terrible. What a hideous, horrible defiling of a man's family. Uh, you've heard from him. One phone call. He said you would know where to begin looking for him. But Cameron, have you not heard the latest? Well, I can't imagine. The authorities are trying to implicate Sion in the murders of his own family. Oh, come on. No one's going to buy that. Nothing even points in that direction. Of course, you and I know you would never do such a thing. But when evil elements are out to get you, they stop at nothing. You have heard about his driver? No. What? Not him, too. I'm afraid so. A uh. car bombing. His body was barely recognizable. Hi. Are you sure you're safe? Does your driver know how to check take care? Check for car bombs and other such things, yes. Yeah. Andre is quite skilled. But you're associated with... with Dr. Ben Judah. Which means you should not be seen with me. Yeah, well, too late for that. Andre assured me we were not followed. Good. I, I cleared customs with my phony passport. Did you use Williams when you booked my room? Unfortunately, I did, Cameron. I'm sorry. I even used my own name to secure it. We'll just use that to keep them off our trail, huh? Cameron... I'm afraid I'm not too good at all this uh, cloak and, and dagger. Why don't you have Andre drive you directly to that hotel? Tell them my plans have changed and I won't be in until Sunday. How do you think of such things so quickly? Here. Here, you can reach me at this number. Is it secure? Yeah, it's a sat phone. Just don't put my name next to that number and don't give it to anyone else. If I were a praying man, I'd pray for you. Haim, one of these days soon, you need to become a praying man. One more thing, Cameron. I have placed a call to Nikolai for his assistance in this. Ah, I wish you hadn't done that. I don't trust him the way you do. You need to get to know the man better. Look, I'll try to communicate with you as soon as I know anything. Call me only if you need to, okay? I will. Be careful, my friend. <clears throat> Welcome to the King David, sir. Do you have a reservation? Yeah, Herb Katz. I should be registered for a two-week stay. All right, Mr. Katz. And are you registered with a certain company? Uh, International Harvester. International Harvester. Harvester. I'm sorry I do not have it here. Could you fill out this card for some more information for me, please? Uh, sure. Thank you. <clears throat> Steel here. Captain Steel, are you all right? Hattie, uh... Yeah, I'm all right. How are you? Um, not so good. Uh, I I'd like to see you, if I could. When? Um, uh, dinner? Tonight? About six? Um, uh, is there a rush? Oh. Um, Amanda's in the States, but she'll she'll be back in a week or so. Uh, no, no, Rayford, I really need to talk to you. Well, Nikolai mm. has meetings from now until midnight. He said he didn't have a problem with my talking to you. I know that you want to be appropriate and all that. It's not a date. Please? Uh, I guess. My driver will pick you up at 6 then. Did you see movement on the river last night? The river moves every night, my friend. <laughs> Have you seen anything strange? 
You said you would help me find someone if you will not take me back. Many people come to me who are searching. I can help you, depending on who you are searching for. I am looking for the heretic. I am sure there are many heretics in Israel. The rabbi, Ben Judah! If you know where he is, tell me now! Calm down, my friend. Put your weapon away. I have turned off the motor for a purpose. Do you know where he is? Look there, along the shore. What? I see nothing! Now, drop your weapon. And you may live. You are one of them! I will kill him! I'm sorry, but Mr. Plank isn't in. Can I take a message? This is Buck Williams. Do you know when he'll be back? Potentate Carpathia requested he come to New Babylon. I don't know all the details. I'll let Steve call you when I get in touch with him if you like. No, no, no. Just tell him I'll get in touch soon. Goodbye. The welling well's not too much farther, sir. This is your first time? Uh, no. No, it's not. Really? So you've seen those two, huh? The preachers? They are very scary, if you ask me. Yeah, I've seen them. How did you get through? I mean, no offense, but you're not... Uh... Well, I was with the rabbi. Ah, that explains it. So, didn't see anyone burn, I hope. That That is too much for me. No, 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 no. I, I, I say to you, unless one is born again, not marvel he cannot that I said see to you, the kingdom. You must be born. God so loved the world that he gave his have only told you earthly son. things and you do not believe. How will you that believe whoever believes in him you should heaven. not perish, but have everlasting life? But so many people have died. Uh, security is tight at the wall. How will you get in without your rabbi friend? Sir? Uh, I, uh, I don't know how. I just know I'm supposed to go there. I do hope you will be careful, sir. There have been so many deaths. It, it would be a pity if you were next. Have you been able to get through to him at all? My career has not eaten or spoken other than what you hear. You must not know about Chaimi. How long? How long, Michael? We cannot keep him hidden forever. God has promised his protection. And how many more will you have to kill? They are getting closer. We must pray that God's deliverer will come. And that he will come soon. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustee. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening. Last time on Left Behind. Ben Judah's time is short. I must get in touch with my friend Heim. No. This, this is totally inappropriate. I killed the man last night. You, you what? I have placed the call to Nikolai for his assistance in this. Ah, I wish you had done that. Rayford, I really need to talk to you. The security is tight at the wall. How will you get in without your rabbi friend? I don't know how. I just know I'm supposed to go there. You are one of them. I will kill <laughs> Based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 30 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind.
crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Do not be afraid, for I know whom you seek. He is not here. Go quickly and tell his disciples that Christ is risen from the dead. Indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. He, he who has, has ears to hear, hear let him hear! I really appreciate you seeing me, Rayford. What's wrong, Hattie? You look Oh, good. oh, not here. Let's talk at dinner. Good evening. Welcome to the Global Bistro, mm. Ms. Durham. Your usual table, ma'am? No, thank you, Jeffrey. Um, but we don't want to be hidden, either. I understand. Right this way. Oh, uh, Jeffrey... I doubt the potentate would appreciate these reports. Depressing patrons who want a little relaxation. I'm afraid it's on every station, ma'am. You can't find music? Something a little lighter? I'll check for you, ma'am, right away. Thank you. If Nikolai were here, that would have driven him crazy. <laughs> Jeffrey ought to thank you. Save his job. <laughs> well, Nikolai wanted the place to be an oasis. Somewhere you could go and get away. Oh, you were in on the planning? <laughs> I helped conceive it, from the menu hmm. to the atmosphere. Well, that's nice. Good job. Thank you. Hattie. Uh, uh, not yet, Rayford. Not yet. That's all you're going to say to me? He's in Galilee? He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Galilee? Does it even exist anymore? I guess I could get a cab. But I have to have some destination. If I come back here later tonight, might I learn more? Birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. I don't understand. Please, can you tell me more? He who has ears... Look, look. I'll come back at midnight. I'm pleading for your help. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. <laughs> can you believe it's been nearly two years since we flew together? <laughs> Rayford, this has been the most incredible two years of my life. <laughs> You've come a long way from senior flight attendant. Oh, think about it. All I ever wanted to be was a flight attendant. And then you felt guilty when it lost its appeal. I loved the people, the travel. I had a huge crush on one of my pilots, but uh, that never worked out. <sighs> had to dredge that up, huh? I'm sorry. That's not what this is about. Good. Because, as you know, I'm happily married again. I envy you. I thought you and Nikolai were getting married. So did I. Now I'm not so sure. Hmm. And I'm not sure I want to, either. Oh. Well, if you want to talk about it... How is everything this evening? Oh, uh, fine. Fine, Jeffrey. Thank you. Uh, we're going to be here a while, so... Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I'll just apply this to your tab. If you need anything else, just call. Rayford, you probably don't know this, but uh, I actually had a thing for Buck Williams once. And? Well, to tell you the truth, when you dumped me. Uh, Hattie, I never dumped you. We were not an item. You gave me plenty of signals, Rayford. I admit that. Still, it's unfair to say I dumped you. I felt dumped, okay? Anyway, 
All of a sudden, Buck Williams looked more attractive to me than ever. Um, forgive me, Hattie, but this is kind of old news. I know that. I know that. Just bear with me. As soon as I met Nikolai, I, I was stricken. When he showed interest, I thought it was just physical. And I'll admit, I would probably have slept with him in a minute and not regretted it. We got involved, and I fell in love. But as God is my witness... Oh, I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't say that around you. Go ahead. I never expected him to be truly interested in me. I just wanted to enjoy it while it lasted. And now? Well, I knew the end had to come soon, and I really thought I was prepared for it. But then, he made me his personal assistant. It was just a way to keep me available to him after hours. Mm. And you went along with it? Of course. And my worst fears were realized. He's still charming and dynamic and the most incredible person I have ever met. But Rayford, I mean nothing to him. I was allowed little playthings like helping develop this restaurant and greeting groups touring the new Global Community Headquarters. But I'm just window dressing. I didn't get a ring until after I was pregnant, and he still hasn't asked me to marry him. Didn't you imply you'd marry? I mean, by accepting his ring? It wasn't nearly that romantic. He told me to close my eyes and hold out my hand. Then he put the ring on my finger, and that was it. You're saying you don't feel committed? I don't feel anything. Hmm. And all the trappings, the wealth, your own car and driver. I assume you have an expense account. Oh, I have all that. To tell you the truth, all that stuff's like flying. You get tired of the routine. I was impressed at first. It was fun, but... Rayford, it's not who I am. I don't know anybody here. People treat me with respect, like Jeffrey, but only because of who I live with. They don't really know him, either. And neither do I. And then, today, I asked him if I could go back to the States for a while to visit my family. Hattie, you are an adult. Make these decisions for yourself. I have more to do than worry about your little schedule. My little schedule? Right. You do not have to ask me. These are things you care for yourself. I thought you'd be interested that I was going to be away. I, I thought you might have an opinion. You do not need my permission. Oh, I can't believe this. Daddy. I would we... rather you be mad at me than ignore me. I am not ignoring you. Nikolai, we don't talk. We just coexist. No, no, check that. You live down the hall, and you come here in, in between meetings. Daddy, I have... I have not made my feelings clear. I want you here. I want you to bear my child. Why do I get the feeling but that I... I need to replace you as my personal assistant. What? Yes, I think the job has simply passed you by. <laughs> Nikolai, that job passed me by the day before I took it. I've never been cut out to be a secretary. I'm glad you see it for what it is. But where does that leave me? What's the future for us? Us. <laughs> yes, us! I'm wearing your ring and carrying your child. When are we going to make this permanent? This is no life for you. Oh, I'm just a piece of furniture to him, Rayford. Hmm. Um, I'm curious, Hattie. When you say you two don't talk, has he ever mentioned Chloe and Buck? <laughs> oh, you don't have to worry about that. Even with all those eyes he has out there, I don't think he has any idea of a connection between you and Buck. Mm. I never mentioned that Buck married your daughter, and I never would. Why? He doesn't need to know. You know, for some reason, Ray, he trusts you implicitly on some things, and not at all on others. <laughs> I've noticed. Really? Like what? Being left out of the plans for the Condor, for one. Oh, yeah. Just seemed bizarre to be his pilot and then be surprised by new equipment. <laughs> if you lived with him, it wouldn't surprise you. I've been out of the loop for months. So when you rushed up to him at the airstrip, Oh, you... I was testing him. I won't deny it. I wasn't as eager to see him as I let on, but I was giving him one more chance. 
<laughs> Wasn't it obvious I spoiled his big appearance? That's the impression I had. <laughs> At least he called me his fiance. Oh, he said we were both overcome with grief. Rayford, there was no grief for him. He loves this stuff. Hmm. He talks like a pacifist, but he hopes people will attack him so he can justify pouncing on them. In private, he's celebrating. He's rubbing his hands together, making plans, putting together his new team. You know, they're meeting right now. Who knows what they'll dream up? Arise. Flee to Egypt. And stay there until I bring you word. What? Uh. Uh. Mm, what time is it? What was that about? God, was that just a dream, or are you trying to tell me something? No news, sir. Tell them to tighten the borders around Israel. Do not let their rabbi escape. Yes, sir. Now, gentlemen, as I was saying, with these attacks, it is inevitable that the population level will decrease. As the population stabilizes, it will be important to ensure it does not explode again. Hmm? Particularly, particularly in the underprivileged countries. Good. With proper legislation, we should be able to get a handle on the worldwide population control. What kind of legislation are we discussing here, potentate? Well, abortion, assisted suicide. Uh. And we must see a reduction in the astronomical expense of care for the defective. The handicapped. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you something, Hattie. You need to know that Buck and Chloe and I all care very deeply about you. I know, but... I don't think you do know. We all wondered if this was the best thing for you. It did from the start. But I hardly heard from any of you. Well, we didn't feel we had a right to say anything. You're an adult. It's your life. I felt I'd pushed you away from PanCon. Buck feels guilty for having introduced you to Nikolai. <laughs> Chloe often wonders if she couldn't have said or done something that might have changed your mind. But why? How did any of you know I wasn't happy here? We just sensed the odds were against you. You know, it may come as a shock to you to know that I never planned on becoming pregnant out of wedlock. Why should that surprise me? Oh, well, Rayford, I can't say my morals were exactly pristine. I'm just saying I wasn't raised that way, and I certainly would not have planned to have a baby without being married. And now? The same is true now. I'm not going to use this pregnancy to force Nikolai Carpathia to marry me. If I pushed him, he'd probably tell me to have an abortion. Um, you'd never consider that, would you? Rayford, I think about it every day. Uh, Hattie, do me a big favor, will you? <laughs> Maybe. Would you think about that very carefully before you take any action? Talk about it with your friends. I hardly have any friends. Hmm. Chloe and Buck and I still consider you our friend. And I believe Amanda could become a good friend if she got to know you. <laughs> I have a feeling the more Amanda got to know me, the less she'd like me. Well, just proves you don't know her. She's the type who doesn't even have to like you to love you. Hmm. Anyway, you said Nikolai didn't mind if you took a trip back to the States. Well, yeah, but that was before the war broke out. Several airports are still taking incoming flights. And as far as I know, no nuclear-equipped warheads landed on any major cities. You think you'd let me go back to the States, then? I wouldn't know, but I'm trying to get back there by Sunday to check on Amanda and to attend a memorial service. Oh, how are you getting there? Commercial. Personally, I think carting around even a dozen or fewer dignitaries is extravagant for the Condor. Anyway, the potent Oh, has... please, don't call him that. <sighs> does it sound as ridiculous to you as it does to me? <laughs> it always has. <laughs> For such a brilliant, powerful man, that stupid title makes him sound like a buffoon. Uh, I don't really know him well enough to call him Nikolai. Well, don't most of you church types consider him the Antichrist? The, uh, the Antichrist? <laughs> I can read, Rayford. 
In fact, I like Buck's writing. When he covers all the various theories and talks about what people think, it comes out that there's a big faction who believes Nikolai might be the Antichrist. Yeah, I've heard that. So, you could call him AC for short. Uh, that's not funny. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I wouldn't know if a person was the Antichrist if he was staring me in the face. <clears throat> anyway, Hattie, I think you should ask, <laughs> for lack of a better title, Global Community Grand Potentate Nikolai Carpathia, <laughs> <laughs> if it's still all right to go home. I'm flying into Milwaukee Saturday. From what I understand, there's room in a rather large house of a woman from our church. You could stay with us. Oh, I couldn't do that, Rayford. My, my mother's in Denver. They haven't been hit yet, have they? <laughs> Not as far as I know. You know, I'm not going to ask Nikolai. You don't want to go? Oh, I want to go. And I will go. I'm just going to leave word that I'm gone. Maybe I'll see you on the flight to Milwaukee. As a matter of fact, unless you hear otherwise, why don't you just assume that my driver will pick you up at 10.30 Saturday morning? Oh, do you think it would be all right with Amanda if we sat together? You speak English? Smart. Very smart. How far to Galilee? You go to Galilee? Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. No, 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 no. Keep going. I want the Wailing Wall now, Galilee later. How far? Galilee now, Lake Tiberius. About 120 kilometers. I think that's them right over there. Hey, you better watch yourself, bud. Those guys will fry you alive. Uh, thanks. I'll take my chances. I need clarification. Can I know about my friend's location? He who has ears to I hear, know that, but I... You would dare interrupt the servants of the Most High God? Forgive me. You must first communicate with the one who loves you. The one who loves me? Look, I, I don't mean to be... <sighs> this is Buck. Buck, it's Chloe. It's about midnight there, right? Right, Chloe, but right now Buck, are you I'm sleeping? In... No, I'm up and I'm... Buck, just tell me you're not at the King David right now. Well, I'm staying there, but, but Chloe... But you're not there right now, right? No, I'm Honey, not. I don't know how to tell you this, but I just have this feeling that you shouldn't be in that hotel tonight. In fact, I just have a premonition that... You shouldn't be in Jerusalem overnight. I don't know about tomorrow, and I don't know about premonitions and all that, but the feeling is so Chloe, strong. I Chloe, just had to call Chloe, 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 what? I'm going to need to call you back, okay? We're okay, but you can't take the time to talk Chloe, to me when I... Chloe, Chloe, I won't stay at the King David tonight, and I won't stay in Jerusalem overnight, okay? Okay, well, that makes me feel better, but I, I just don't want to talk to you. I'll call you back, hon, I promise. I'm, I'm ready now. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. By Galilee, I can only assume you mean Lake Tiberius. Will I find my friend in Galilee or on the Sea of Galilee or where? He who has ears to hear, let, let him, him hear. hear. Yes, but how do I get there? It will go well with you if you return to the multitude. Return to the multitude? Uh, to them? Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. He who has ears, 
to hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Excuse me. Excuse me, can a fellow get a boat ride up the Jordan River into Lake Tiberias at this time of night? Uh, yes. Boat tour come in daytime. No, no, no. I need one tonight. Tonight? Uh, get in. I take you to river. It would be cheaper for you to wait until tomorrow. No, no, no. I can't wait. I have to go tonight. No, I can take you. Of course, the cost will be quite high. Yeah, well, I figured that. What did you say your name was? Michael. 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 Okay, fair enough. Uh, I want to go all the way up river to Lake Tiberius. From Jericho, that is nearly 100 kilometers against current. Yeah. Well, how long will it take? To the mouth of Lake Tiberius? Three hours, perhaps more. Fine. When would you like to leave? Right now. In the daytime, I carry 20 tourists and four strong young men. Well, why so many? We pilot by arm power. You mean oars? Yes, just like in the Bible. But you've got motors. Why would you We do cover that? the outboards with wood and burlap, and no one is the wiser. It makes for a long day, but the tourists are happy. Didn't know it'd be this cold. So, you are American. Right. And you don't know who you're looking for, or exactly where they'll be? Sorry. I'm just counting on figuring it out when I get there. <laughs> Lake Tiberius is no pond. Your friend or friends could be on either shore or at either end. Yeah, yeah, I know. Come on. You've never spoken to me audibly, and I don't expect you to start now, but I could sure use more direction. I don't know if the dream is from you and I'm supposed to go through Egypt on the way back or what. I, I don't know if I'm going to find Ben Judah with some fishermen, or whether I'm even on the right track by heading to the old Sea of Galilee. I've always enjoyed being resourceful, but I confess, I am at the end of my rope here. Please help me. So much for the answer to prayer. Why did we stop? Is there a problem? Michael? There is no problem, Mr. Katz. Until your eyes grow accustomed to the darkness... You will not be able to see the high-powered weapon pointed at your head. Please, remain seated. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustee. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening. Previously on Left Behind... He who has ears to hear... Let him hear! Do not be afraid, for I know whom you seek. If I come back here later tonight, might I learn more? As soon as I met Nikolai, I was stricken. But Rayford, I mean nothing to him. God, was that just a dream, or are you trying to tell me something? Do not let the rabbi escape. Excuse me, can a fellow get a boat ride up the Jordan River into Lake Tiberias at this time of night? Until your eyes grow accustomed to the darkness, you will not be able to see the high-powered weapon pointed at your head. Based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 31 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. I mean you no harm. You have nothing to fear from me. I, sir, am not the one who should fear. 
I have twice within the last 48 hours pulled the trigger on this weapon, dispatching people I believe to be enemies of God. One thing I can assure you, I am in no way an enemy of God. Are you telling me you're a servant of his? The question is, Mr. Katz, are you? Apparently, we'll need to assure each other we're on the same side. The responsibility is yours. People who look for someone I don't want them to find die. And you justify this homicide how? What I want from you is your real name. The name of the person you're looking for, why you are looking for that person, and what you plan to do should you find that person. Until I'm sure you're on my side, I could never risk revealing that. And you'd be willing to die to protect your friend? I hope it doesn't come to that, but yes. I am impressed with that answer. But I will not hesitate to add you to the list of the dead if you can't convince me you have the right motive. Ah, uh, test me. That'll convince you and prove to me that we have the same person in mind. Okay. True or false, the person you are looking for is young? Compared to you, false. The person you are looking for is female. Also false. The person you are looking for is a medical doctor. False. A Gentile. False. Uneducated. False. Bilingual. False. <sighs> Bilingual doesn't say enough. Multilingual is more... <sighs> the man you are looking for is Rabbi Dr. Sion ben Judah. If you are seeking to kill him, and I am his compatriot, I will kill you. If you are seeking to rescue him, and I represent his captors, I will kill you. Uh, but in the latter case, you would have been lying about serving God. True. And what would happen to me, then? You might kill me, but you ultimately lose. And how do we know that? It's all been foretold. God wins. If that is true, and I turn out to be your brother, you can tell me your real name. If it turns out I am your enemy, I will kill you anyway. My name is Cameron Williams. I'm a friend of Dr. Ben Judah. Would you be the American that he talks about? Probably. One last test. Doesn't look like I have a choice. Quickly, list for me the six prophecies of the Messiah that were fulfilled in Jesus Christ according to the witnesses. Right. Uh, but it'd be a lot easier to think if you'd get the barrel of that gun out of my throat. <sighs> Thanks. Please do not stall for time. All the prophecies of the Messiah were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. I can tell you six that have to do with your culture alone. He'd be a descendant of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob from the tribe of Judah, heir to the throne of David, born in Bethlehem. Oh, my brother. <laughs> I am glad I did not kill you. Uh, yeah. Pretty happy about it myself. <laughs> who told you where you might find Sion? Moishe and Eli. I am one who became a believer under their preaching and out of Sion. Well, what are you then, an evangelist? In the manner of Paul the Apostle, according to Dr. Ben Judah, he says that there are 144,000 of us around the world. Would you believe you are an almost instant answer to prayer? That would not surprise me in the least. You must realize that you are the same. We're not going all the way to Lake Tiberias. We're not? About halfway between Jericho and Lake Tiberias, we will put ashore and hike five kilometers inland. How are you able to elude the zealots? An escape plan has been in place for some time. At the first sign of threat, we sent a car to Sion's office so small it appeared only the driver could fit in it. Sion lay on the floor in the back seat covered with a blanket. He was raised to this very boat, and I took him upriver. And these stories about his driver having been in on the slaughter of his family? That man was exonerated in the most decisive way. Would you not agree? Uh, was he also a believer? Sadly, no. Dr. Benjuta is not aware of the loss of his driver, by the way. But he knows about his family? Yes. And you can imagine how awful that is. Only God can console him. I pray he will. He has not yet been able to speak. He just cries. What are your plans for him? He must leave the country. And where will you and your friends take him? Me and my friends? Who then? You, my friend. <laughs> Me? God spoke through Moshe and Eli. He assured us a deliverer would come. He would know the rabbi, he would know the witnesses, and he would know the messianic prophecies. And most of all, he would know the Lord's Christ. That, my friend, is you. Me? 
What can I do with Xion? We assumed you would smuggle him out of the country. Smuggle? I want to help. Face it, Mr. Williams. It was not easy for you to find the rabbi, was it? You very nearly got yourself killed. So... So is there an airport anywhere nearby that can handle a Learjet? There is a strip west of Jericho at Albira. Isn't that back down river? Yes, which is an easier trip, of course. But you know that is the airport that serves Jerusalem. Uh, he's probably too recognizable. How can I possibly get him through customs? How else? Supernaturally. I need to tell you something you may find strange. <laughs> something stranger than tonight? Well, I think I may have been warned in a dream to leave through Egypt rather than Israel. You may have? I'm not used to this kind of, well, communication from God. I wouldn't argue with a dream that seemed to come from God. But does it make sense? It makes more sense than trying to smuggle a target of the zealots out through an international airport. <laughs> there is something you should know. I believe Dr. Benjuto will be reluctant to flee. <laughs> what choice does he have? That's just it. He may not want a choice. But the world needs him. You don't need to convince me. Your boots will stay dry as if you stand in the bow and leap out when you hear the bottom scraping the sand. Fling your bag as far as you can. Jump with me and make sure you outrun the boat. Whoa. That was close. Here, help me with the boat. Thank you. And now I must ask you to be very silent. We are secluded, but we must take no chances. Michael! Welcome. Uh, who is this? Uh, watch your head. This is Mr. Williams from America. He is here to help. Hi. I'll turn on the lamp. Our friend is in the corner. There. Could I have a moment alone with him? I will join you. That, that will not be necessary. Come. My Redeemer liveth. What else do you know? I know that he who began a good work in me shall be faithful to complete it. Your wife and your children were believers. Today they see God. Cameron, my friend, did you bring your Bible? Well, not in book form. I have the entire scripture on my computer. I have lost more than my family. Sir? My home library, my sacred books, all burned, all gone. The only thing I loved more in this life was my family. You brought nothing from your office? I threw on a ridiculous disguise. I carried nothing. Well, maybe someone can forward the books from your office. Not without endangering their life. I am the chief suspect in the murder of my family. I'm not sure how much battery's left, but what would you like to see? The joy sir? of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, sometimes the joy I find the Psalms of the Lord comforting. Is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of Than ever right now, hon. Having me come back here was a good idea, Ray. With Buck gone and Chloe still healing, I, I feel needed. Well, you're needed here, too. Mm. I'm counting the days when we're together again. Ray, about Hattie, I want you to know I trust you fully. She sounds like she's hurting. Yeah, she is. I can't imagine what she's been through. We'll pray for her. Mm. What I wouldn't give to get that girl under some sound teaching. Yeah. I'm trying to get her to stop through our area on her way back. Maybe when Bruce is going through some... Uh... Oh, Ray. Oh, it's uh, still too fresh, I guess. I just... 
hope God provides another teacher for us. Whoever it is, it won't be another Bruce. My friends and brothers in Christ, though I am deeply wounded, I must pray. I pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I praise you because you are the one and only true God, the God above all other gods. You sit high above the heavens. There is none other like you. In you, there is no change, neither shadow of turning. Please, my brothers, pray for me. Almighty Father, I lift my brother Zion to you now and pray for divine strength. Bear him up with your spirit, O God. Do not let your enemies be victorious over yes. him. We pray with thanksgiving that you have spared his life. Yes, Lord. And we grieve with Zion, righteous Father, and we ask you to give him your peace, the peace you promise that passes all of our understanding. Yours is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty. And your will is what we seek now, for Sion's life. If God is for us, who can be against us? Thank you, my brothers. I believe, I believe I may finally sleep. Then you should. We'll not be going anywhere tonight. I'll make arrangements for after dark tomorrow. Just another day here, Ken. I just took a bath in a little offshoot of the Jordan River, and I'm drying my clothes over a campfire. And talking on a sat phone. <laughs> yeah. So where do you want to meet? Egypt, Alexandria. You know how to get there? Sure, that's easy enough. Okay. When will you be long? Well, we'll leave here tonight as soon as it gets dark. Then, I guess, however long it takes a 40-footer with two outboard motors to get us all to Alexandria. <laughs> two outboards? Oh, yeah. Sure that's going to do it? Yeah, why? Hey, this is my first time here, buddy, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure there's no way to get from where you are to Alexandria without carrying that boat across dry land. Uh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got a plan B? Well, not yet. You sure it's okay for us to be out here? As long as we stay out of sight from the air, we can stretch our legs and breathe a bit. So, uh, you don't like the Alexandria idea, do you? There are some small airports here and there in Israel. Why are you so determined to fly out of Egypt? No, it's the dream. I can't shake it. I don't know. Maybe we have some advantage in Egypt we wouldn't have in Israel. I can't imagine what. For you to legally get out of Israel into Egypt, you still have to go through customs somewhere. Yeah. How realistic is that, considering my guest? You're wondering. I'm not. We either avoid the border crossings or count on yet another supernatural act. Hmm. I'm open to any suggestion. Excuse me. This is Buck. I got Alexandria scoped out. Good. You still want to meet there? Yeah, we're talking about it now. Uh, let me get back to you, Ken. Gotcha. I'll touch base in a couple hours. Okay, thanks. Are you able to drive a stick shift? Why? I have an old school bus that smells of fish and paint. I use it for both professions. It's on its last legs, but you might be able to use it to find a way across the border into the Sinai. Hmm. Well, what's in the Sinai? You don't know? Well, I know it's a desert. Then you know all you need to know. Great. So what are you proposing? I sell you the bus, fair and square. You get the paperwork. If you are stopped, the tags are traced to me. But I sold the bus. Okay. Keep talking. You hide Dr. Benjuda under the seats in the back. Okay. If you can get him across the border and into the Sinai, that bus should get you as far as al Arish. There is an airstrip there. And it's unlikely the Egyptians will care about a man wanted in Israel. If they even seem to care, they can be bought. Michael, what if the zealots have offered a reward for the rabbi? A reward? My comrade is right about the risk. Unless you can beat their price. The Egyptians might lead toward selling him back. Well, how will I know the price? You'll have to guess. <laughs> what would be your guess? Not less than a million dollars. A million dollars? You think every American has that kind of money? Don't you? No. And anyone who did wouldn't carry it in cash. Would you have half that much? Ah. Oh. 
What is troubling you, my friend? I need to get you out of here, and I have no idea how. Have you prayed? Constantly. The Lord will make a way. It seems impossible right now. Yahweh is the God of the impossible. Michael, here. You know I have two sets of identification. I'm in the country under the name of Herb Katz, an American businessman. But I have my real ID as well. So? So, how about we get me across the border as Herb Katz, and the rabbi as Cameron Williams? Nah, you forget that even we ancient, dusty countries are now computerized. If you came into Israel as Herb Katz, there is no record that Cameron Williams is here. If he's not here, how can he leave? Okay. All right, then. Let's say I leave as Cameron Williams and the rabbi leaves as Herb Katz. Though there's no record of my being here under my own name, I can show them my clearance level and my proximity to Carpathia and tell them not to ask any questions. There's an outside chance, but Sion ben Judah does not speak like an American Jew. No, but it's worth it. And sh- he does not look in the least like you or your picture. We are agreed that we have to get him out of here, aren't we? No question. Well, then tell me what you propose. I'm out of ideas. Uh, Michael, I do not know why God has allowed this, but something deep within me says he would not have allowed me this second chance unless he had more use for me. But, Sion... My life is worthless in this country now. If Nikolai Carpathia focuses on me, I'll be a fugitive everywhere. But it makes no sense for me to stay here. I cannot hide forever, and I must have some outlet for my ministry. Tion, my friend, we love you as our spiritual father, and we will die before we see you harmed. We dare not ask you for counsel in the midst of your pain, but if God has told you anything, we need to hear it. The sky is getting black, and unless we wait another 24 hours, the time to move is now. What shall we do? Oh, God, our help in ages past. You are an ever-present help in times of trouble, and we humbly ask you now, reveal to us your plan, your will. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. You give me living water, and I thirst no more. Oh, God. Oh, God, help us. Oh, God. Oh, speak, Lord, for your servants here. Heed the words of the Lord. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. I have spoken. I have provided. Do not hesitate. <laughs> Oh, man. I believe the Lord has spoken. It is time, gentlemen. Let's move. Has the Lord spoken to you? D- didn't he speak to you? Yes. I just wanted to make sure we were in agreement. Well, if I have a vote, we are unanimous. Let's get going. Joan, take these ID papers. I have felt no leading that I should use these. And I have a definite leading that I shouldn't have them on me. I'll ask you for the documents back when we get into the Sinai. Is everything in order? Joan has a little cash, a few credit cards, and his own papers. Shall we keep those for him? Remove the cash and keep it with you. Give me the credit cards. And any other identification you have, throw it over. Oh, God. What is it? My photos. My family. Michael. I must ask you to someday ship these two. I will do it. Give me your wallet. And now I believe you should return Mr. Williams' papers to him. If he's not going to use mine, shouldn't we try to get him some phony ID? What Michael says is right. I am a man who has been stripped of everything, even his identity. All right, then. That won't work. There's nowhere on your person or in your bag that they will not search for an extra ID. Well, I can't toss mine into the Jordan. Give it to me. I will ship it to you along with Sion's photographs. It is the safest. You can't afford to be found with it either. My life is destined to be short, my brother. I feel honored to be one of the witnesses predicted in the scriptures. But my days are limited whether I am caught with your papers or not. I still don't see how we're going to get Sion across the border without papers, real or phony. We already prayed. I don't know how God is going to do this either. 
I just know that he is. But don't we at least have to do our part? And what is our part, Cameron? It is only when we are out of ideas that we really depend on God. Sorry to call you now, but Daddy, I've been trying to reach Buck on his sat phone. Uh, I wouldn't worry about Buck, honey. You know he finds ways to stay safe. Dad, Buck finds ways to nearly get himself killed. You know Buck rarely cares much about what time of day it is. If whatever he's doing takes all night, then it takes him all night. You're a big help. <laughs> I'm trying to be. Well, I just don't understand why he wouldn't have his sat phone with him all the time. Uh, maybe it's in his bag. So if his bag is in the hotel and he's out gallivanting, I'm out of luck? Just... Try not to worry, Chloe. Oh, yeah. Buck always turns up somewhere. <sighs> oh, Michael. I was so worried. Uh, I need to keep in touch more. Oh, which reminds me. Excuse me, I need to make a call. I'll get the extra oil and water for the bus. At the side of the garage, you'll find the gasoline. Fill the tank and the cans in the back. Can, yeah, but we're just Rabbi, this is for you. Thank you. Yeah, I got it. The blankets will keep you warm in the night. There are clothes and food as well. Come, Rabbi. Yeah, yeah, I'll call. Okay. My uh, my pilot says he'll meet us at the place we talked about. Good. Yes. May God go with you as you proclaim Yahshua HaMashiach. Zion is on board. Go with God, my friend. Yes. And you. Go with God. You ready, Sion? I am, my friend. Uh, by dawn, uh, we could be anywhere. Detained, in prison, stranded in the desert. In heaven, with my family. Yeah, yeah, we're that. Hang on. Here we go. Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustide. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening. Last time on Left Behind... My brother, I am glad I did not kill you. Pretty happy about it myself. <laughs> God spoke through Moshe and Eli. He assured us a deliverer would come. How can I possibly get him through customs? How else? Supernaturally. I think I may have been warned in a dream to leave through Egypt rather than Israel. I got Alexandria scoped out. They want to meet there? Yeah, we're talking about it now. I sell you the bus. If you are stopped, the tags are traced to me. Buck always turns up somewhere. By dawn, we could be anywhere. Detained, in prison, in heaven, with my family. Hang on, here we go. Based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents... Episode 32 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. We're out of the city now, Sean. I think you can come up for air. Oh, Cameron, do you know where you're going? Well, Michael said we can choose from four checkpoints between here and Egypt. Here. Uh, the most direct ones are on the Gaza Strip. Yes, but I assume those are heavily patrolled. Exactly. We're headed south through Hebron and Beersheba. 
Michael mentioned your. It is further south than we want, but the cutoff will take us through the northern edge of the Negev. Well, how far are we from the border when we get there? Less than 50 kilometers. And from there we go north or west, whichever we like. No telling which Egyptian border crossing is better. This route here, it will take us directly to Al Arish. The northern pass will be heavily traveled and more carefully hmm. watched. Are you tired? Would you like me to take over? <laughs> You're kidding, right? What are you going to do if we get stopped? Trade places? I was just offering. No. I appreciate it. Well, I'm fine, Doc. You don't mind if I call you Doc, do you? <laughs> Cameron, you have struggled with my name since we met. <laughs> <laughs> you may call me what you wish. <laughs> Thanks. Well, at this rate, it'll take all night to get to the border. Think the tourists will be out of Hebron this time of night? Cameron, there is something I would like to talk about. Sure, go ahead. I am deeply grateful you have risked your life to come for me. Yeah, no friend would do less. We have been through some incredible experiences. That is why I knew if I could get Dr. Rosenzweig to point you in the direction of the witnesses, you would find me. I did not dare let on to him where I was. Even my driver knew only to take me to Michael and the other brothers in Jericho. Jaime was so distraught at what happened to my family. Michael promised to keep him informed, but I would like to call him myself. Perhaps I can use your secure phone once we have passed the border. What? Do you think it's too late to call him? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty late. Oh, but if the situation were reversed, I, I would be overjoyed to hear from him at any time of the day or night. Well, I'm sure he felt feels the same. Maybe I should call him now. May I use your phone? Doc, you know you're welcome to whatever I have, but I wouldn't phone him. Oh, Cameron. He is no longer with us, is he? Cameron, we have gone through too much for you to hold out on me now. Clearly you have been told the disposition of Jaime. Those who are believers of all people must never fear any truth, hard as it may be. Jaime is dead. Oh. You heard me preach so many times. I can only hope and pray that perhaps after he delivered me to Michael, he had time to join the family. Tell me how it happened. A, uh, a car bomb. Instantaneous, then. Perhaps he did not suffer. Doc, the, uh, the heat cage is rising. I'm going to stop and add some water to the radiator. Ow! That is hot. Mm. Oh, great. Global community. Yeah! Hi there. Hi. Hi. Tsion, if you can hear me, get down. Hide, now! Tsion, are you back there? Please, remain outside your vehicle. Oh, God. Help me keep this man off the bus. Mr. Sharosh, you can stop playing games. We have evidence of your close ties to Rabbi Ben Judah. He is a great man. Many respect him in this country. Few can respect one who so viciously kills his wife and children, and in broad daylight. There is no way he would kill his family. We have eyewitnesses. You have liars. Oh, where have you taken him? I assume your wife and children are sleeping peacefully in their beds tonight. They are in no danger. Hmm. Unless you refuse to tell us where the rabbi is. Now tell us. I said I wanted no interruptions. Excuse me, sir. We have a report. I think you need to see this. Stand where you are. Just, uh, just lowering the hood, sir. Had some overheating problems. Are you alone? Name's Herb Katz. I asked if you are alone. I'm an American businessman here on pleasure. Papers, please. Hmm. There you go. Hmm. Mr. Katz, 
Where did you get this vehicle? Oh, bought it. Just before midnight. And you bought it from? Oh, I have the papers. Can't pronounce his name. I'm American. Sir, the plates on this vehicle trace uh, to a resident of Jericho. Well, there you go. That's where I bought it, Jericho. And you say you purchased it before midnight? Yes, sir. Are you aware of a manhunt in this country? Manhunt? Really? The owner of this vehicle was detained just over an hour ago in connection with aiding and abetting a murder suspect. You don't say. <laughs> well, I just took a ride on the river with him. The guy runs a tour boat. I'm going to need to see those papers. I'll, uh, I'll get them for you. So, uh, so how long you worked for the global community? Just give me the papers, sir. Yeah. Sure. Uh, here you go. Hmm. Yeah, I told this guy I needed something to get me from Israel to Egypt so I could fly home. He looked pretty excited to get rid of this clunker. He used a lot of oil. The papers yeah. seem to be in order, but it is a strange coincidence that you purchased this vehicle only hours before the man was arrested. I don't see what buying a bus has to do with the stuff some guy's messed up in. We have reason to believe the man who sold you this vehicle has been harboring a murderer. Murderer? He was found with the suspect's papers and those of an American. It will not be long before we persuade him to tell us what we want to know. Are you uh, familiar with uh, Cameron Williams from America? Hey, it's a big country. I'm from Chicago. And you are leaving tonight from Egypt? That's right. Why? Well, I gotta get back home to the family and... Uh, why do you need to leave through Egypt? Why do you not fly out of Jerusalem or Tel Aviv? Well, no flights tonight. I chartered a plane. And why didn't you simply hire a ride to Egypt? Hey, look at the title and bill of sale. Paid less for the bus than I would have for a cab or a limo. One moment, sir. Doc, I'm trying to keep him off this bus, but I don't know if I can. God, God, help me think of something. We are now determining if the man who sold you this vehicle will implicate you in his scheme. His scheme? It will not take us long to find out where he has hidden the suspect. He will talk. He has a wife and children. Stay where you are. Steel. Ray. Oh, I'm Ooh. sorry to wake you. I, I know it's the middle of the night there. It's just... Well, well we've... Uh excitement, and we thought you might know something. Mm, about what? Loretta called from church. She said she had an overwhelming urge to pray for Buck. Okay. I'm sure he could use it. He's in Israel. Something right? made her fall on her knees, Ray. She thought she'd been lightheaded, but once she was kneeling, she realized she was just praying earnestly for Buck. Well, all I know is that Buck's in Israel. Might be trying to find Sion Ben Judah. You heard about his family. Oh, yes, it was awful. It's just that Buck has a way of getting himself into trouble. Yeah, well, he also has a way of getting himself out of trouble. And what do you make of this premonition, or, or whatever it was, of mm, Loretta's? I wouldn't call it a premonition. Rayford, this is no fluke. Now, Loretta's as level headed as they come. She was so upset, she shut the office and came home. Uh, wait, wait. She, she wants to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Put her on. I'm so sorry about troubling you at this time of night. It's it's all right. No, it's not. There's no reason to raise you out of a sound sleep, but God told me to pray for that boy. I just know it. Well, and I'm glad you did. You think I'm crazy, don't you? <laughs> I've always thought you were crazy, Loretta. That's why we love you so much. Captain Steele. Seriously, you think I've lost my marbles, don't you? No, ma'am. Well, God seems to be working in much more direct and dramatic ways. If you were led to pray for Buck right then, well, remember to ask him what was happening. That's just the thing. I had this overwhelming sense that Buck was in deep trouble. I hope he makes it out of there alive. <laughs> I'm sure he will. And Loretta, would you do me a favor? After getting me up in the middle of the night, you name it. If God prompts you to pray for me, would you do it with all your might? Of course I will. You know that. I hope you're not just being funny. I have never been more serious. Our techniques have worked. You mean with the guy who sold me the bus? Mr. Charles has given us the location of the hiding place. And? 
Under threat of torture and even death, he swears you were a tour guest to whom he sold the vehicle. Well, then it sounds like I can get going. For safety's sake, I have been instructed to search your vehicle for any evidence of the fugitive. But you just have said... Have no fears, sir. It is simply a precaution. Perhaps you were used to transport some evidence out of the country without you knowing it. Now stand aside while I conduct the search. You don't need a warrant or my permission or anything? Sir, you have been pleasant and cooperative. But do not make the mistake of thinking that you are dealing with local law enforcement. I represent the peacekeeping forces of the global community. We are restricted by no conventions or rules. I could confiscate this vehicle without so much as your signature. Now wait here! God, blind this man or give me the strength to kill him. If that's what I'm supposed to do. Do you think you're going to get away with this? Uh, what's the problem? The vehicle. Uh, it appears to me that you plan to drive it across the border and dispose of it. Uh, actually, I hear the locals try to pick up extra money helping with baggage. I figured they'd be thrilled with a bus like this. You're transporting it across the border to sell it? Uh, no. That's frowned upon. I'll probably trade it for some help with the supplies. The vehicle is a big tip for a baggage handler, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Call me frivolous. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Katz. Well, you're you're welcome. And thank you. <clears throat> How in the world did you pull that off, Doc? Sean, it's me. You can come out now. Doc, if you can hear me, I'm gonna start driving to avoid suspicion. If you're on the bus, you should probably let me know now. Oh, come on. You didn't start walking toward Egypt. What in the world? <sighs> if you have ever wondered what that saying meant about the Lord working in mysterious ways, that was your answer. What happened? I, I must have dozed off. I barely recall you were doing something with the engine. When you raised the hood, I realized I, I needed to relieve myself. <laughs> you were pouring the water when I got off. I was only about five meters off the road when the patrol car rolled by. I knew I couldn't be on the bus, so I just started walking, praying you'd somehow talk your way out of it. Well, I think I did. But I'm not going to give him a chance to change his mind. Let's get out of here. Cameron, I am concerned about the disposition of my family. Yeah, I can understand. What happens when pseudo-official factions do something like this? That's what bothers me. You never know what happens to the bodies. Do they bury them? Burn them? I do not know. I wish I could do something tangible for you. Tangible? What is more tangible than saving my life? But there is something more you can do that would be a great comfort. Anything. Tell me about your little group of believers in America. The Tribulation Force? Yes. I would like to meet this Pastor Bruce, to pray with your Tribulation Force and open the scriptures with him. This will ease my pain. You will meet Bruce at the glorious appearing. I see. When did it happen? He was in the hospital with some kind of virus when the bombing started. We'll probably never know whether it was the virus he picked up or the impact of the blast. Perhaps the Lord spared him from the bombing by taking him first. We're coming up to the border now. Uh, the entrance to the Sinai is up that road there. H how is the vehicle? Well, the engine's a little hot, but not too bad. Fuel and oil are fine. The crossing looks quiet. Yeah, not too many travelers this time of night. You better go take your place, Doc. There will be no running into the desert this time. The barbed wire... It is everywhere. Quiet now. Quiet. There's a guard coming up. <laughs> Good morning. I will need to see your passport, visa, identification papers, vehicle registration, and anything on board we should know about before the search. Yeah. Yeah, here you go. I'm carrying food, water, some extra gasoline, and oil in the back. Anything else? Uh, anything else? Anything else we need to see, sir? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have some clothes and blankets back there, too. Is that all? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm carrying.
When the bar is raised, pull your vehicle to the right and meet me inside the building. Thanks. I'll, uh, I'll be right there. Hey, Doc. Can you, uh, can you scoot back further? I'll try. Okay, do what you can. God will have to do the rest. I will see you soon, Cameron. If not in this life, then in the kingdom beyond. What is the holdup? Been, uh, been having a little trouble with the radiator. You know anything about radiators? Uh, please bring him in now. Yeah, uh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Yeah, don't know much about engines, really. Business is my game. America, you know. This way. All right, Mr. Katz. Just a few questions. On these, you may search the vehicle. Yes, sir. You entered uh, Israel through what entry point? Uh, Tel Aviv. It should be all right there. It is. Your papers seem to be in order, Mr. Katz. And you are leaving the area when? If my pilot meets up with me as soon as I get to al -Arish. And how will you dispose of the vehicle? Well, I was hoping to sell it cheap to somebody at the airport. <laughs> Depending upon how cheap, that, uh, that should be no problem. Uh, is, uh, something wrong? You were detained near Beersheba earlier. <laughs> detained is overstating it. I was adding water to the radiator and a GC peacekeeper came by. Did he tell you the previous owner of your vehicle has been arrested in connection with the escape of Zion ben Judah? Uh, uh, yeah, he mentioned that. <laughs> You might be interested in this, then. ...has been identified as Michael Sharosh. In a raid on his Jericho home shortly after midnight tonight, peacekeeping forces found personal photos of Ben Judah's family and identification papers from both Ben Judah and an American journalist, Cameron Williams. So, uh, here. officer, how do you think ben the Judah traffic's gonna be from here? Scholar and Despicable, isn't it, and Mr. Katz? Uh, yeah. Unbelievable. On these, uh, you are finished with the inspection? Yes, sir. All is in order. Blankets and supplies. Have a safe journey, Mr. Katz. Thank you. Uh, thank you for visiting Israel. Uh, yeah, you're, uh, you're welcome. Mr. Katz. Yes. My name is Anis. Yes. Uh, Anis, thank you. Excuse me. Doc! Doc, are you still on board? I am here, Cameron. Oh, that's good to hear. Want to tell me what happened? Are we a safe distance? We're fine. We're fine. What happened? Praise the Lord God, maker of heaven and earth. I don't know if the young Anis was an angel or a man, but he was sent from God. Anis? Anis. He walked up and down the aisle of the bus, shining his flashlight around everywhere. Then he knelt and shined it under the seats. I looked right into the beam. He kept the flashlight in my face with one hand and reached with the other to grab my shirt. Uh, pulled me close to me. I thought my heart would explode. I imagined myself dragged into the building, a, a trophy for an overzealous young officer. Hello, Rabbi Sion ben Judah. My name is Anis. Pray as you have never prayed before that my report will be believed. Oh, thank God. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Cameron, as God is my witness, the young man stood and walked out of the bus. I have been lying here, praising God with my tears ever since. Incredible. Praise to God. Well, well we have one more border crossing, the Egyptian one. I believe God will deliver us, Cameron. I believe we are going to make it.
Welcome to Egypt, gentlemen. You both do as I say, you sir will be able to go back to sleep in a few minutes, and you both may continue on your way. I will search the bus while you both go inside for processing. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. I guess we better go inside. And you had no trouble at the Israeli checkpoint then? Um, no, sir. No, sir. Just trouble staying awake. <laughs> mm. You are traveling alone. Each of the bus yours. Yeah, the paper's right there. Uh, I see. Uh, how far to al -Arish? Less than a hundred kilometers. Oh, yeah. No commercial flights scheduled out of there at this time, of course. Oh, yeah, I know. I've made my own arrangements. Huh. Very good, then, Mr. Katz. Have a pleasant trip. The search is complete, Mr. Katz. Thank you. Uh, good night. And you're both processed and ready to proceed? All set. All set. All right. <sighs> Carry on, gentlemen. All right, Doc. Where were you? Did you like my act? <laughs> Impressive. <laughs> Where'd you go when you're supposed to be in with me being processed? I merely stood behind the bus. You got off and went one way, I went the other. <laughs> you're joking. Oh, I did not know what to do, Cameron. I certainly wasn't going to walk into the processing center without papers. When you returned, I simply joined you. Only question now is how long before that guard mentions he saw two men on the bus. Yes. Perhaps it will not come up. But if it does, they will soon give chase. Yeah, well, I trust God will deliver us. But I also think we better prepare. We'll, uh, we'll pull over up there and fill the tank with gas and put in more oil and... What is it? Do you see something? Uh, I thought I saw a car back there. Oh, what are we worried about? God would not bring us so far only to have us captured. Would he? Ah, uh, uh-oh. Flashing yellow lights. Better secure everything and get out of sight. More excitement. Lord, have it we had enough for one day. Uh, I took a look at the cars at the border. Pretty small. If I step on it, it could take them a while to catch us. This bus can go faster, Cameron? Miracles happen, Doc. And if they do catch us? I'm trying to think of a strategy. I will be in the back, Cameron. Praying that you do. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustide. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening. Last time on Left Behind... We are now determining if the man who sold you this vehicle will implicate you in his scheme. Tell me about your little group of believers in America. The Tribulation Force? Yes. Anis, you may search the vehicle. Yes, sir. Doc, are you still on board? I don't know if the young Anis was an angel or a man, but he was sent from God. Welcome to Egypt, gentlemen. Only question now is how long before that guard mentions he saw two men on the bus. Yes. Ah, uh, uh-oh. Flashing yellow lights... Better secure everything and get out of sight. Based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 33 of the dramatic audio edition of left behind. I'm guessing about 30 kilometers. They're gaining on I know, I know. I've got it to the floor. Cameron, what will you do when they catch us? Now, I tell you one thing, Doc. I'm not going back to the border. If they get to us before the airport, I'm just going to keep driving. They'll want you to turn around. Uh, then I'll have to engage in a little civil disobedience. I appreciate your resolve. I will pray and you do as God leads you. Doc, 
How close are they now? Still gaining. All right, all right. I need your help. Find my phone in my bag. Okay, I, I, I have it. Good, good. Toss it up here. I am not so good at tossing. Here you are. Doc, how old are you? That is considered an impolite question uh, in my culture. Remind me of that someday. How old are you? I'm 46. You Why? You in pretty good shape. I don't keep my nose in books all day. I just want to make sure you be able to run if you need to, okay? I hope okay? it doesn't come to that. But yes, I can run. I have surprising endurance for a, a man of my vintage. Okay, better get back to where you were, Doc, and tell me how much gas we have left. You can see the cage. You're close to empty. No, no, not here. The spare can's in the back. I'll check, but surely you don't plan to stop for a fill-up. Yeah, well, you check the gas cans. I'm going to see the cigarette lighter works. Cigarette lighters, gasoline. I do not like the combination. Buck here. Buck is Chloe. Chloe. It's good to hear your voice, but I can't talk right now, honey. Bob, trust me, on? trust me. Don't ask any questions. For right now, I'm okay, but please tell everybody to pray. But we've been And listen, I'm... somehow on the internet or something, find the phone number for the airport at Isle Reach, <laughs> south of the Gaza Strip on the Mediterranean. Okay. But Get a hold of Ken Ritz. He should be waiting there. Have him call me at this number, okay? Okay, okay, but what if I Chloe, can't... it's life or death. Well, call me as soon as I, you're safe. I promise, I promise. And Chloe... I love you. I love you. Stay safe, bus. Cameron, are you planning to blow up this bus? Oh, you really are a scholar, aren't you, oh, I just hope you wait until we get to the airport. Don't waste time on the internet. But Buck said I that have I... a guide to all those numbers. Just hang on. Dad, it's a closer phone call for you, right? Yeah. Can you get in touch with Ken Ritz and tell him to call Buck? <laughs> I'm tempted to fly over there myself. Uh, but... If I had a small enough plane. Oh, we don't need both you and Buck endangering your life. <laughs> goes with the job. Please, Dad, just hurry. They're less than half a mile behind us now. What is that noise? Uh, it's only a matter of time before the radiator overheats. I'm guessing we have about eight uh, liters of gasoline left back here. Uh, that's plenty. Oh, I agree. That will be more than enough to make martyrs of us both. Oh, man, it looks like they're speeding up. Yeah, but I do not believe we can outrun them to the airport. Uh, they're going to catch us. Then why push the vehicle to its limit? It would be smarter to slow your speed to be sure we make it to the airport. If we break down, all your resolve means nothing. Uh, you make a good point, Doc. <clears throat> He's coming up behind us now. What will you do? Uh, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll wave at him. He's pulling around. Hello there. Cameron. Hi. It is the same uh, guard who searched the bus. Uh, oh, fasten your seatbelt, Doc. The chase is on! I wish I had a seatbelt! Cameron, why have you stopped? I had to. He got in front of me and slammed on the brakes. I will go with him. It is me they want. Sit down, Doc. I'm not done yet! <laughs> Follow us to the airport! In the name of the global community! Is this your plan, Cameron? I'm telling you, they're not gonna get me out of this bus till we're at the airport! Cameron, he's coming around again! This time he's motioning with a gun! If I stop, this bus will stall! Over. Follow me to Al Arish! No! You follow me back to the border! We're closer to the airport! I can't make him back to the border! Leave it! You'll ride with me! I'll see you at the airport! No! Man, talk to me. Talk to the What's up? I got a border guard waving a gun at me, Ken. That's what's up. Have you passed customs? Yeah, I'm ready when you are. What's your position at the airport? Oh, well, looks like I'm the only plane out here tonight. Lear's just outside a hangar at the end of the runway. Cool. I'll call you from the airport. About ten minutes, maybe less. Hang on. Whoa! I'm rolling back here. Hey, yeah, enjoy the ride, Doc. What's happening? Uh, this guy's trying to get us to turn around. He slammed on his brakes in front of me. Now he's behind. Me. He's hitting us from behind, mm. Cameron. Uh, hang on, Doc. I don't think he wants to ruin that shiny GC squad car. Let's see what he does with this! You okay? I am invigorated. Ken, you still there? Yeah, what in the world's going on? Look, we're not gonna have time to go through customs. You need to be cleared, engines running, door open, and stairs down. <laughs> Sounds like this is gonna be fun. If I can keep this thing rolling, I'll try to get as close to your plane as possible. What am I gonna run into? Look out! Look out! Uh, just hit the squad car. Oh, looks like he's pretty much out of commission. We should be home free. Now, if they're Egyptian, you can bet they're going to radio ahead. There'll be some kind of roadblock. You think it'll be something I can blast through? No idea, but if you're as close as you say you are, I better get out to the plane. Good luck. <laughs> hey, cigarette lighter works. I'm not sure I want to hear that. Look, the lights at the airstrip. All right, 
We need to strategize. Strategy? Why start now? Just tell me what uh. to do, Cameron, and I'll... Uh, Cameron, look on the next hill! Oh, I see them. Our friend back there did radio ahead. Have you ever heard of playing chicken? No, but uh. I assume it means you are going to challenge them. Yeah, if the engine holds out. All right, here's what we got to do. If these two cars don't back down, we're going to crash. But if we get past them, I want you to pour all that gas into the biggest container. I'll have the cigarette lighter hot. If we smash through the roadblock, I'll get as close to the runway as possible, okay? If we can't smash through, I'll try to go around. And what if that is not possible? Well, I'll pull the wheel hard to the left and slam on the brakes. The back end will swing around to the roadblock, and anything loose will slide out the back door. Put the bucket of gas near the back, and when I give you the signal, toss the cigarette lighter. I told you I am not good uh, at tossing. Doc, Pray hard and just throw it into the bucket. I don't understand. How will we escape that? If we can't get by the roadblock, it's our only hope. When that back door blows open and that burning gas flies out, we have to hang on up here so we don't get thrown into it. While they're concentrating on the fire, we jump out the front and run toward the jet. Got it? I've got it, but I am not as optimistic as before. Here they come. Hang on! Look at that! They have gone down the embankment. Yeah. But it looks like we have the company again. Now keep down, Cameron. The guard is firing at us. Uh, can you dump the gas now? I'll try. The airport's just ahead. We should be able to see. Oh, no. A roadblock. Uh, looks like we'll be testing your arm with that lighter, Doc. The gasoline is sloshing around. Do the best you can, He's okay? shooting at our tires. Almost there. Get ready. Here, here's the lighter. Catch. Uh -huh. Oh, under the seat, Doc. I'm not seat. very good at catching either. Can you find it? Yeah, yes, I have it. Remember, get up here and hang on after you toss it. I am ready. Okay. Now! Brace yourself, Doc. Hurry. I'm trying. We'll keep it low to the ground. They're firing into the bus. Just as you said, they think we're still in there. Rich is right where he said it would be. Come on. Uh, Ah, 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 get in! Ah, I'm trying! Oh, get the stairs! Oh, oh, I'm in! Ten! Ten! Go! 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 Just as we made it to the plane. Say goodbye to Egypt, gentlemen. Next stop, U.S. of A. You gonna make it there, buddy? Yeah, I think so. There's a first aid kit in that cabinet. I'll get it. Williams, you should have left a mess down there. What was that all about? Oh, it'd take a week to tell, Ken. Doc, how's your leg? Well, I caught my foot under one of the seats when we hit the roadblock. I was afraid it was broken, but it feels more like a sprain. Here, let me help you with your boot. Ooh. Oh. Easy, okay? Uh -huh. oh. oh, man, look at that. Uh. Bullet went right through the sole. There is much blood. Mm. Oh, I think it just grazed me, though. Wow. You're as exhausted as I am? I am ready to sleep. But we would be remiss, would we not, if we did not return thanks? I hear you. Oh, merciful Father, how we praise you for your answer to our prayers. We thank you that the glory of the Lord was our rear guard. And we ask your protection now on your children who remain in danger. For Michael and our needs. Mm. Mm. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> I must have really crashed. Ow! Hey, Ow. better just stay seated Ow. there, buddy. How are you doing, Cap? Yeah, better. Now that we're over American airspace. Oh, no. What's up? I promised to call my wife. Hey, I already talked to your people. Hmm? They were mighty relieved to hear you were on your way home. <laughs> can I, uh, can I borrow your phone? Sure. You didn't say anything about my wound or my passenger, did you, Ken? Oh, give me some credit, buddy. Your wound isn't worth worrying your wife about until she sees it. <laughs> I didn't say a word about your passenger, either. You're a good man, Ken. Hey, I like a compliment as much as the next guy. But I'd rather have that battle pay you owe me. <laughs> that can be arranged. Buck? Yeah, hi, it's me. 
Why didn't you call me? I was worried sick. Believe me, sweetie, when you hear the whole story, you'll understand. Is he with you? Yeah, yeah, he's sleeping. And considering what he's been through, it's a miracle. Listen, Chloe, Verna can't know about this, okay? Okay. You can tell your dad and Amanda and Loretta, but no one else. All right, I understand. Can you pick us up at Powaukee? Oh, well, I'm not up to driving yet, but Amanda can drive. Oh, and, and Verna isn't even staying with us anymore. She moved in with friends. Really? Hmm. That could be a problem. I may have made myself vulnerable to the worst possible person in my profession. This way, then. I feel like I am in an international witness protection program. Come in. We were so worried about you. You remember I told you about Loretta? Hi. You're welcome to stay as long as you'd like. Thank you. I am sorry for the loss of your pastor. Thank you. I'm sorry for your loss as well. Thank you. Come into the kitchen. There are sandwiches and something to drink. <laughs> you know, I wish Rayford were here. I feel like the only teetotaler in a car full of drunks. Every chore that takes two feet is going to be mine. I am deeply grateful for your hospitality. Dr. Benjuda, we've heard so much about you. We're really honored to have you with us. I can't imagine your pain. I cannot tell you how deeply grateful I am that God has brought me here. The Lord has shown me his hand so clearly since the death of my family that I cannot deny his presence. Yet there are times I wonder how I will go on. Well, I knew this was going to be difficult. I just didn't know how difficult. Hmm. Wish you'd never get involved with someone like me, huh? <sighs> well, let's just say it hasn't been boring. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, tell me about Verna. How did she react to you? She thought we were all wacky. Yeah, she got that part right. Question is, how much damage can she do? I mean, she knows where I stand. Hmm. It's only a matter of time till it gets back to Carpathia. Well, Verna said she'd keep your secret for now. We did get that out of her. Hmm. But why? Oh, you would have been proud of us. Loretta told Verna her entire story. And then I got my licks in. I told her how you and I met and how we became believers. Uh, was she sympathetic at all? Well, yeah. I'm... I told her the most important thing was what she decided to do about Christ. But I also said our very lives depended on her protecting you. And then it was strange. She said as much as she admires Carpathia and what he's done for the world, <laughs> she hates the way he controls and manipulates the news. So we really don't know where she stands. Well, she wanted to trade favors. I assume hmm. a promotion or a raise in exchange for keeping <clears throat> quiet. I told her you would never work that way. But she did promise one thing. Yeah? What's that? Well, she's coming to Bruce's memorial service. <laughs> You're kidding. Well, she said she'd be there. I told her to come early, that it would be packed. Well, maybe I can talk to her there. Verna's past is incredible. Really? Her father was an atheist... She said the idea of attending church was never even discussed. Hmm. She admitted she's cynical, thought it made her the perfect journalist. Well, she always gave me the willies. I was as cynical as anybody, but at least I tried to keep a balance of humor and objectivity. I mean, looking for the sliver of positive, the hopeful. Oh, yeah. That's you, all right. Mr. Hopeful. <laughs> what? Oh. You know what I've been... Uh thinking about a lot lately, Mr. Hopeful. What's that? I've been thinking about having a child with you. <laughs> Wait a second. You want to talk about this now? Chloe? Not right now. I'm tired. But let's not shut the door on it. Listen, you get some sleep. I'm going to sneak over to the church and see how Bruce's shelter turned out, okay? Oh, Bruce's shelter. Oh, no, there is a pleasant thought to drift to sleep by. Oh, Rayford, put that away. I don't want to see anything more about death and dying. I mean, can you believe that religious nut in Israel who killed his family? Yeah. Sad story. Well... Look, I don't want to keep you up. No, it's, it's okay. I can talk if you want. I, 
I just don't know, Rayford. I just don't understand him. I mean, I don't think he's as bad as some people think, but I'm not impressed anymore. He's not the same man behind closed doors that he is in public. How do you have to think about the baby Oh, now. my pregnancy is not what this is about, Rayford. What do you think your options are? Well, the way I see it, I have three. I can keep it, which I do not want to do. I can put it up for adoption, but I'm not sure I want to endure that. And I can terminate the pregnancy. You mean have an abortion? <sighs> The worst scenario would be to take it to term and go through all that pain, then get all those maternal instincts before I delivered somebody else's child. Then I'd have to give it up You just called it a child. What? You referred to this as your pregnancy, but once you deliver it, then it's a child? Well, it'll be someone's child. Why do you want to make me feel guilty for considering an abortion? (sighs) Hattie, I can't make you feel guilty. You have to make your own decisions. Well, abortion isn't an easy decision, even though it is the best and the simplest. Best and simplest for whom? For me. Hattie, who's looking out for the child's best interest? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Milwaukee and Mitchell Field. As the captain taxis to the... Hattie, I wish you'd stop and see us on your way back. Even if I head back to New Babylon before you, stop and see Chloe and Buck. Talk to Amanda. Would you do that? Probably not. I I appreciate your sentiments, but no. Probably not. Oh, Rayford. Yeah. I didn't mean to ignore you. I I was just thankful to see Ray. Oh, I understand. Can we drop you somewhere? Well, my bags are checked through to Denver. Can you drop me there? I meant, can we walk you to your gate? Grab a cup of coffee. Oh, I'll be fine. I know this airport. I've got a little layover, so I'm just going to try to relax. Well, have a safe flight. I, uh, I hope the time with your family turns out okay. Goodbye. Doesn't look like things went too well on the flight over. That's the understatement of life. <laughs> the International Red hey, Cross and look the World Health Organization are not equipped to handle devastation, disease, and death on this scale. Hmm. Potentate Carpathia's visionary plan. <sighs> this guy's in Carpathia's back pocket. I see. Agenda Says whatever ever. Saint Nick wants A him to plan say. Mm. That can bring this planet from the brink of death to the utopian state, really, regarding physical health. Yeah, yeah. in other words, Carpathia clears away the bodies he's blown to bits or starved to death because of his war, and the rest of us are healthier and wealthier than ever. Spoken like a true, loyal employee. What would you have done if I couldn't get back? Hmm. I don't know. I knew I couldn't risk speaking in public. And certainly Dr. Ben Judah here couldn't either. It would appear that way. Mm. Well, what about your situation? Bucky can't stay here long, can he? No. Now, it won't be long before it gets back to global community brass that I was involved in the escape. Hmm. In fact, you wouldn't surprise me if Carpathia already knows. I will be there Sunday morning. I would not want to miss that service. Hmm. Well, how about if you sit with Loretta? You know, you come as an old friend. You know, if you take away those Middle Eastern clothes... I will do whatever I have to. I I wouldn't risk his exposure any further than the service. If the shelter's ready, we can sneak him in there before the end of the day tomorrow. You know, you should see the place. It has everything. Phone lines, supplies. Bruce even had a satellite dish installed in the old steeple. Sounds like it'll be just the place. Uh... Uh, Dr. Ben Judah, if you'll excuse us for a few minutes. Uh, certainly, and, and thank you. <clears throat> um, I suppose it falls to me to start the first meeting after the, the loss of Bruce. The only business is voting in a new member. 
I think it's obvious to all of us that God has provided a new leader and mentor in Dr. Ben Judah. Well, we're asking an awful lot of him, aren't we? Are we sure he wants to live in this country? In this city? Well, Chloe, where else could he go? I mean, it's only fair to ask him rather than to make assumptions, I guess. Yeah. But his options are limited. And if what you say is true about the shelter, his ministry around the world could explode. Well, through the internet and satellite? Hmm. Uh, Chloe, could you ask Joan to join us? Yeah, sure. Um, tomorrow morning, I want you to know I'm not holding anything back. People are going to know Bruce's message in as clear a way as I can give it. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Benjuda. Please, call me Tsion, or if that name is troublesome, you may call me Doc, as my friend Mr. Williams does. Yeah, good yeah. enough. Um, Tsion. Very good. Show off. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tsion, we want you to join our core group. We know you've been deeply wounded and may be in pain for a long time. We need you to be our leader, in essence, our pastor. And we're not asking for an immediate decision. Uh, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I am deeply honored and moved. I am grateful to God for his provision and blessing in bringing young Cameron to save my life. Devastated as I am, I see the clear hand of God Almighty in guiding my steps. Where else can I go? I have already prayed. I am where God wants me to be. Well, praise God. I look forward to tomorrow, hearing more about your mentor and my predecessor, Bruce. I will not promise to replace him in your hearts, but as God has blessed me with a heart that seeks after him, I dedicate the rest of my life to sharing with you and anyone who will hear it the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Savior, my Messiah. My Savior! Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustee. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening. Last time on Left Behind... Oh, no! A roadblock! Our friend back there did radio ahead. Hang on! Go, Doc, get in! Uh, I'm trying! I'll get the stairs! Uh, I'm in! Say goodbye to Egypt, gentlemen. Next stop, U.S. of A. Listen, Chloe, Verna can't know about this, okay? Okay. Talk to Amanda. Would you do that? No. Probably not. Joan, we want you to join our court. I have already prayed. I am where God wants me to be. Based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 34 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. We'll add a little Middle Eastern flavor to our morning repast, no? <laughs> <laughs> if that means you're cooking breakfast, I'm all for it. Tell me what you expect from me today, Cameron. Uh, how will I find your church? Well, Loretta's over there now getting ready. She'll be back here to pick you up at about nine. Amanda, Chloe, and I will head over as soon as we're finished with breakfast. Very good. Doc, I think it's important for us to be careful. It's okay with you. I'll sit separate from you and Loretta. No need to explain. I understand. There they are. Loretta's sitting toward the back. That's good. Oh, there's 
no sign of Myrna yet. She could be outside trying to get in. How's Rayford doing? He was up half the night preparing for the message. I just hope he doesn't fall asleep. Mr. Steele, I hate mm. to bother you, but are you sure you want the casket opened at this time? Uh, is there a problem? The sanctuary is full to overflowing. It would be inappropriate to open the casket in front of all those people. Oh, yeah, I see your point. Uh, well, we're almost ready. Uh, why don't you put the coffin out there and we'll schedule a viewing later. Very good, sir. Um, could you... just for me? Certainly, sir, if you would avert your eyes a moment. All right, sir. Bruce. Thank you. Um, members and friends of New Hope Village Church and relatives and friends of Bruce Barnes, I greet you today in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Rayford Steele, and I... I need to tell you I'm up here this morning not as an elder and, and certainly not as a preacher. I'm here because I love that man. And in a small way, I want to speak for him. Like many And I would fail miserably if I failed to tell you what Bruce told me and everyone else he met the last couple of years. Jesus has paid the penalty for your sin. The work has been done. Now, are we to live good lives, to the, do the best we can? Of course, but to earn our salvation? Scripture is clear that we are saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is a gift from God. Now, I, I have a lot to say from notes Bruce left us. But before I go on, I want to open the floor to anyone else who wants to say something in memory of Bruce. You all know me here. I've been Bruce's secretary since the day everybody else disappeared. Bruce was a, a bright man, but he made a huge mistake. Well, I did too. We all did. As soon as he got right with the Lord, he was committed for the rest of his life. I can't tell you how many he led to Christ. He loved people into the kingdom. And I, I pray if there's anybody here who's still holding out, that, that you'll realize your need for God and come to him today. Do you see Vernon at all? No, no sign of her yet. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen. What's he doing? You do not Stop know me. Him. I represent the international late. community where your pastor toiled so long and so effectively. Many, many Christian leaders around the globe knew him, sat under his ministry, and were brought closer to Christ because of him. My prayer for you is that you would continue his ministry and his memory, that you would, as the scriptures say, not grow weary in doing good. Um. I'm going to ask for just a five-minute break. Uh, stretch your legs. We'll meet back here at um, one o'clock. What do you need? You mean besides prayer? I've been praying all morning. Uh, Buck, what's up with our friend? I have no idea. I wanted to go back there and sit him down. It could mean trouble. Yeah. Let's hope not. Listen, Rayford, I'll be praying for you. Nobody's leaving. They seem to really want to hear this. Yeah. Thanks. As best we can determine, these notes were written by Bruce while returning from India last week. The file is labeled Sermon with today's date. He writes, um, I'm convinced we're at the end of the period of peace. If I'm right, we are close to the next prediction, the red horse of the apocalypse. I believe Revelation 6, uh, 3 through 4, predicts a global war. It will be instigated by the Antichrist, and yet he will rise as a great peacemaker. 
This will immediately usher in the black horse of plague and famine and the pale horse of death. Now, I, I remind you, this was written by a man who died either just before or just after the first bomb hit in the global war we're in. Revelation 6, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who would be killed as they were, was completed. In other words, many of those who have died and are yet to die in this war are considered tribulation martyrs. I put Bruce in this category. He'll be given a white robe and will rest until even more martyrs join him. I must ask you today, are you prepared? Are you willing? Would you give your life for the sake of the gospel? I will. I will too. Yeah, I'm in. I fear we may all be asked to die for the cause of Christ. And I praise God you're willing. But we must look at the sixth seal. Let me read from one translation. He opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Well, I'm no theologian, people, but I ask you, is there anything difficult to understand about this text? Behold, there was a great earthquake. Bruce taught us about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Well, I submit to you, those horsemen are at full gallop. The fifth seal, the martyrs slain for the word of God, has been opened. I believe we need to prepare to endure what this passage calls the wrath of the Lamb. Hello, Cameron. Oh, Vernon. I'm glad you made it. I didn't see you inside. I made it all right, Cameron. And I also recognized Zion ben Judah. Listen, Fern, can we talk about this? He's a wanted man, Buck. Ben Judah's in deep trouble when the global community finds out he's here. Uh, Verna. And your passport and ID were found. Verna, we're going to have to go somewhere to talk about this. I think we'd better. And I want to interview Ben Judah. Well, let's get together tomorrow, and then we can discuss... Tomorrow? It. Yes. Today. Let's meet at the office this afternoon. It's not good for me. I'm coming back here for the viewing at 4. 6.30, then. Why does this have to be today? Oh, <laughs> it doesn't. I could just tell Carpathia or someone near him exactly what I've seen here. Hey, I took a huge risk helping you out the other night. You and I sure did. And you may regret it the rest of your life. So none of what you heard here today made any impact? Huh, of course it did. It made me wonder why I went soft on you. What? You people are wacko. I'm going to need some compelling reason to keep quiet about this. All right, Verna. 6.30 at the office. So what are you going to do? Oh, meet her. Try to convince her not to talk? Hmm, I don't know. Where do you go from here? Well, Carpathia wants me back in New Babylon, then it's on to Rome. 
Doesn't that have anything to do with the Pontifex Maximus? Yeah. Uh, Carpathia is making noises about headquartering the One World Village Faith Church. in New Babylon. This is Loretta. Heard anything from Hattie? Yes, Verna. Uh, oh, hold on a second. He's here. Loretta, tell her I'm with someone. Oh, and ask if she has my page. But he's with someone right now. Mm hmm. Okay, hold on a minute while I get a pen. I need to go to the next room. Thanks, Lord. I hope Hattie's family can talk some sense into her about the baby. Right. Any chance she'll come by on her way back to New Babylon? Oh, I hope so. Somehow we have to pull her away from Carpathia. All right, Verna, I'll tell her. Hmm. Goodbye. I regret ever introducing her. So, Loretta, what did she want? She said, a uh, Steve Plank called. Wants to get in touch. <laughs> yeah, what about my paycheck? Said they're waiting for you. You can pick them up tonight when you meet. Ray, the funeral director said we can have a moment with Bruce's body when the church clears. It's almost empty. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Buck, what about Sion? Where is he? He's around. Well, I really think we ought to keep him with us for a while. Well, we have him in a safe place, right? Oh, now. I gotcha. What does that mean? Loretta, <laughs> there are some things we're not going to tell you. For your own good. Well, what would you say if I told you I didn't appreciate that very much? We don't mean any offense. It's just... Well, it offends me to have secrets kept from I'm me. I'm serious about doing this for your own good. The fact is, someday, and it may be soon, very high-placed officials may try to force you to tell them where Dr. Ben Judy is. And you think if I know where he is, I'll crack? Loretta, if you don't know where Tion is, you can't crack. I know you all are living dangerous lives, but I've risked some, too, just by putting you up. You'll I... be able to communicate with him by phone and by computer. Are you saying Tion is where I think he is? Mm -hmm. Is that necessary already? I'm afraid so. Captain Steele, tell me one thing. You're not keeping this from me because you think I'd blab it all over, are Loretta, you? Loretta, come here. Why? Just come here. I know you don't tell secrets. The fact is, the people who want to know Zion's location would stop at nothing. You're like a mom to me. I couldn't put you through that. All right, then. I'm still a tougher bird than you people think, but all right. If I didn't think you were doing this with my best interests in mind, misguided as you all are, I'd throw you out of my boarding house. Excuse me, sir. The sanctuary is empty. If you'd like to see him one last time... He made me so mad at first. And now, I can't imagine what would have happened if he hadn't been there. If there's one thing that Bruce taught me, it's that the Christian life's a series of new beginnings. But uh, going on without him, it's not gonna be easy. Goodbye, friend. We'll meet again. Good evening, Verna. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, am I not welcome? If Buck needs someone to hold his hand... <laughs> Why would I need someone to hold my hand, Verna? Buck, we both know I hold the cards now, don't we? What happened to the new Verna? There was never a new Verna. Then nothing we've said, nothing you heard at Loretta's or at the church meant anything? Well, <laughs> I have to admit I appreciate the new car. It is better than the one I had. Uh, so your admission of jealousy about Buck regretting the way you talked to him, that was all, what, made up? I'm surprised at the pettiness of this conversation. Verna. <laughs> We're not talking about office politics. We're not talking about personality conflicts. Mm. The fact is, Buck is not loyal to his employer. You're a wolf in sheep's clothing. You're a spy. You think this man is the Antichrist himself. Look, Verna, we know that you've read the how-to books on intimidation, so why don't you sit down? Because it's not going to work. So what are you going to do? Engage in extortion? It just seems to me a, a lot's riding on who knows or who doesn't know about the man you're hiding. What are you talking about, Verna? I saw him in church this morning. Sion ben Judah. At least you thought you did. I know Buck was in Israel, uh -huh. and that his papers were found with the ben Judah sympathizer. And so you saw Buck in church with ben Judah. I didn't say that. I said I saw ben Judah. He was sitting with the woman who put me up the other night, Loretta. So Loretta's dating Sion ben Judah. 
I heard him speak. If that wasn't him, I'm no journalist. <laughs> no comment. You were sitting where? We couldn't see you. I was in the balcony. And from the balcony, you could see a man sitting in the back with Loretta? I didn't see them together. They both spoke, and it was from the same area. Look, okay, wait, <laughs> let me get this straight. Ben Judah escapes from Israel, apparently with Buck's help, and then Buck is brilliant enough to leave his official papers with some enemy of the state. And when Buck gets Ben Judah safely into North America, he brings him out in public at his own church. I saw him. Uh, wait, wait. And then Ben Judah stands and speaks in front of hundreds of people. Is that your theory? If that wasn't Ben Judah, who was it? <laughs> hey, this is your story, Verna. I don't know. <laughs> Loretta will tell me. I don't suppose you'd give me her phone number. Uh, sure. Here you go. I wonder if uh, she's home. Loretta's phone, Rayford Steele speaking. Uh, yeah. Loretta, please? May I ask who's calling? Verna Z. Oh, hi, Verna. Uh, yeah, here she is. It's Verna. Verna, dear, I didn't get to ask you how you liked the service today. Did you find it as moving as I did? We'll have to talk about that sometime later. I just wanted to... I can't think of a better time than now. Would you like to meet someplace? Come over? No, ma'am. Not now. I just want to ask you a question. Who was that man with you in church this morning? That man? Yes. You were with a Middle Eastern man. He spoke briefly. Who was he? No, I, I'm just asking. Well, I'm just telling you that that's a personal question. So you're not going to tell me? I don't believe it's any of your business. What if I told you Buck and Chloe said you'd tell me? First off, I'd probably say you were a liar. But that would be impolite and more impertinent than the question you asked. Just tell me if that was Rabbi Sion ben Judah of Israel. It sounds like you've already named him. What do you need my input for? So it was him. I didn't. But was it? You want the honest truth, Verna. Mm, right on. That man is my secret lover. I keep him under the bed. What? Loretta... Verna, if you'd like to talk about how moved you were by our memorial service, I'd love to check... So you've all gotten together and decided not to tell the truth? We didn't do Verna. anything of the sort. Oh, you people. <laughs> You're priceless, you know that? Hey, I gotta earn my keep. Here's your checks. Your time is short, Buck. Uh, to tell you the truth, Verna, I believe all of our time is short. You really believe this stuff, don't you? If we're wacko, then so be it. But weren't you impressed at all by Bruce's predictions from the Bible? I mean, things that are coming true right now. It's just like Nostradamus. Those words can mean anything you want them to. Oh, you're smarter than that, Verna. What will it take to convince you? Did you hear what's coming next? Yeah, I know. An earthquake. Will that convince you? I suppose that'd be pretty hard to argue with. Well, I have some advice. If that earthquake is as devastating as the Bible makes it sound, you might not have time to change your mind about all this. I still don't like the idea of Bucks pretending to be something he's not. Our beliefs and our private lives are none of our employer's business. For instance, uh, if I knew you were a... Lesbian. Who it... told you that? Verna. I want to know. It's none of your business. You tell anybody that and I'll... Th oh. You're making my point. Your personal life is, is confidential. There's nothing to tell. Exactly. So we're agreed. Uh, about what? That neither of us is going to say anything about the other's personal life. Yeah. Sounds fair to me. So, with the backlog of deaths and the scarcity of grave sites, we're estimating a term at no sooner than three weeks, possibly as late as five weeks. I understand. If you could inform us once the burials occurred, we'd appreciate it. We won't have a service. Very good. We'll keep you informed. That seems so Goodbye. sad. Shouldn't somebody be there? I've never been much for graveside services, and I don't think anything more needs to be said over Bruce's body. That's true. It's not like he's going to feel lonely or neglected. L Loretta, I think Bruce would have wanted you to see this. What is it? It's from his journal. Are you sure? Well, if I'd written something like this, I'd want you to see it. Especially after I was gone. All right. 
Thank you, Lord, for Loretta. What a godsend she's been. I know she's dealing with her own guilt about being left behind, yet she's growing. She clearly has the gift of helps and is more loyal than I deserve. When I see her attitude, the way she loves, I can see Jesus. Oh, thank you, Rayford, thank you for letting me see that. Buck, I had no idea Verna was a lesbian. Neither did I. Well, you're kidding. Oh, you think that little revelation was divine? Well, I'd sooner think it was a wild coincidence, but you never know. That tidbit may have saved your life. You may have saved my life. Mm -hmm. You were brilliant in there. Hey, she rattled the wrong cage. Leon, what can I do for you? Have you heard anything from the potentate's woman? The potentate's woman? You both flew in on the same flight. Where is she? I wasn't under the impression I was responsible for her, Leon. Steele, you do not really want to withhold this information. Mr. Carpathia wants to... Oh, he wants to know where she is. In other words, he hasn't heard from her. Don't toy with me. Where does he think she is? Tell me what you know. Look, I don't know precisely where she is, and I don't feel I'm at liberty to report where I think she is without her knowledge. So... You want me to imply to Carpathia that you are harboring his fiancée? The last time I saw Hattie Durham was at Mitchell Field in Milwaukee when I arrived. And she went on where? If she didn't share her itinerary, I think I should keep quiet. You could regret this, Steele. You know what, Leon? I'll sleep tonight. Hmm. We will find her, Captain Steele. Yeah, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustide. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening. Last time on Left Behind. How will I find your church? Doug, I think it's important for us to be careful. I want to open the floor to anyone else who wants to say something in memory of Bruce. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, what's he doing? I'm going to need some compelling reason to keep quiet about this. All right, Verna. If that earthquake is as devastating as the Bible makes it sound, you might not have time to change your mind about all this. Bruce taught us about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Well, I submit to you... Those horsemen are at full gallop. Based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 35 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. Your life for crying out loud. Steve, I don't expect you Forget to understand. Forget about the cover piece. That trip to Israel, you let your passport fall into the wrong hand. Hey, hey, I got away, didn't they I? They tortured that Shirash guy. He swore you were just a passenger on his boat. I was. They destroyed the boat. They beat the guy within an inch of his life, For you know? what? Are we on the record? I don't know, Steve, are we? Carpathia still likes the copy you're sending out. He's Chicago kid. He thinks Global Community Weekly is the best magazine in the world. <laughs> yeah, if you flush objectivity and journalistic credibility down the... <laughs> hey, we all let go of that years ago, even before Carpathia. Steve, 
You're the first one who's questioned me about this. And there are going to be a truckload more once the cover issue comes out on Thursday. How do you know so much? Production gave me a peek. It's not even finished yet. I still have to interview Matthews. Well, you got everybody else under the sun. Yeah, well, the correspondents did most of the legwork. How'd you get the sidebar from Ben Judah? <laughs> you like it? Yeah, I liked it. But that's not the question. I just don't buy the note about Ben Judah weighing in over the internet. Come on. He submitted I... his views from an undisclosed location. What's so hard to believe about that? Kiddo, I'm telling you, I don't like this. You're playing with fire. The technology is incredible. I can monitor the news. I have access to the internet. I would like to communicate by email, but I do not want to endanger the recipients. Well, let me talk with Donnie Moore about that. I think the answer might be to just put the messages on a bulletin board. Then anyone can download them. Nobody will know who's accessing what. Wonderful. I look forward to making much of Bruce's material. Chloe and Amanda have been a tremendous help sorting through it. I guess Amanda's sticking around for a few more days. She will help put together the resources for the house churches. Cameron, Bruce's outline for the ministry is coming together more quickly than he could ever dream. The way you say it, Doc, it sounds like bad news. I am grateful for God's sovereignty. But it is clear. The red horse of war is here. And behind it, the black horse of plagues and famine. And the pale horse of death. I don't understand why Matthews couldn't come to New Babylon on his own. Why do you have to pick him up? Oh, you know Carpathia. He likes to take the upper hand. Uh. Always being kind and considerate. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to go back at some point anyway. I wonder what he wants from Matthews. Hmm. Who knows? Could be anything. Yeah. The increase in converts has to be grating at both of them. And may its grating increase. Mm. <laughs> uh, hang on. What is it? Well, you don't have to go in with me. I know I don't have to. I want to. <sighs> Honey, I'm sorry about all this. You deserve a full-time husband. Oh, Ray. I'm going to make it up to you. But we'll take a weekend and... and <laughs> I don't know. We'll do something. Rayford, we've both been called to this, not just you. Whatever sacrifice we have to make is understood. You don't have to feel guilty for leaving. I know you love me. And I love you with all my heart. Mm. I'll be waiting for you. Call me. Let me know when you get there. I will. I love you so much. Goodbye, Rayford. Oh, Loretta's got it. Wait, it's Hattie. Oh, let me hear. Yes. Let me hear. You woke me, dear, but it's all right. Captain Steele said you might call. Well, I'm flying through Milwaukee on my way back to New Babylon, and I scheduled a six-hour layover. Just tell anybody there who cares... I'll be at Mitchell Field if they want to talk. There's no obligation. I won't be offended if they don't come, but... Oh, they'll fine. come, hon. Don't you worry about that. Oh, I can't believe it. Oh, can you and Amanda pick her up? Sure, yeah. All right, I've got one more phone interview before my story goes to print. Okay. Steele. Hey, Ray, it's Mac. Uh, Mac, good timing. Just landed. Yeah, and your uh, taxi's here. What do you mean? I mean, if the boss doesn't want to wait around, hey, meet me at the uh, helipad on the other side of the terminal. I'm supposed to chop you back to headquarters. Well, I hope you're happy. What is it now, Verna? The news about your cover story's leaking. Check this out. One of our enterprising young reporters in Africa looked up some geological scholars at the University of Zimbabwe. Hey One of the morning the shows got wind of it and interviewed the guy the today. Earthquakes are caused by faults by underground plates rubbing against each other. It's cause and effect. The reason it happens in certain areas at certain times is logically because it's not happening other places at the same time. Now, the idea of simultaneous earthquakes is, well, it's simply unheard of. The odds against one Earth-wide geological event, which would really be simultaneous earthquakes all oh, over the globe, are astronomical. Oh, excuse and me, furthermore, Pontifex Matthews, thank you for taking the time on short notice. Certainly, Mr. Williams. I consider it an honor to be a part of another cover story. <laughs> what are you calling it? Well, it's a question. Will we suffer the wrath of the Lamb? Ah, yes. From the book of Revelation. 
What a wonderful, archaic, but beautiful piece of literature. Symbolic, of course. There's a reference to an earthquake in there. Yes, the earthquake. Regardless of your view of the person or concept of God, hardly anyone today would imagine a supreme spirit being full of goodness and light, subjecting the entire earth, already suffering from a devastating war, to a calamity like an earthquake. Global Weekly. There you are, sir. The Wrath of the Lamb edition. <laughs> Pretty strange, huh? Yeah. According to this, the moon's going to turn the color of that cover. Uh, give me a Global Weekly. Hey, as long as it sells magazines. Here you go. Thanks. Here, let me give you a hand with those, right? Oh, thanks. Is this the elevator? Uh, no, that goes to the stairs. The elevator's on the other side. Come on. Carpathia Suite is on 18. You probably know he's got the whole top floor. Yeah. It's incredible, isn't it? So, uh, you want to go straight to his office? No, um, I'd rather he didn't know I was here yet. I want to get him packed, a shower. Carpathia will want to leave for Rome when he finds out I'm here. Yeah, good enough. Uh, listen, I'll see you in a couple hours. Well, good morning, Buck. And just what are you doing at my desk? Uh, the phones are going crazy already. I got here early to see if there'd be any response. Hmm. How follows the voicemail? Here, listen to these. So, Global Community Weekly stooped to the level of the tabloids? Quit covering the latest fairy tales from the so-called church and leave this trash to the yellow journalists. Ooh, didn't sound all that impressed. Oh, wait, it gets better. I wouldn't have dreamed people still believe this malarkey. Whoever dug up these weirdos ought to get a prize. Thanks for exposing them and showing what fools they really are. You know, you don't hear the word malarkey much anymore. <laughs> Why didn't somebody tell me about this before? I've been reading Revelation since the minute this magazine hit my doorstep, and I'm scared to death. What am I supposed to do Global Community Weekly, this is Alice. Yes, ma'am. It's for you. It's your friend, Vern. Oh, uh, I'll take it in the office. Yeah, Vern. Buck, I'm keeping your secret, so I hope you're keeping your end of the bargain. Yeah, I am. What's got you so agitated this early? Your cover story, of course. I knew it was coming, but I didn't expect it to be so overt. Don't you think this exposes you? Uh, I don't know. I hope not. Even if Carpathia didn't own this magazine, I'd want to come across as objective. You're deluding yourself. Verna, I hope you'll keep thinking about what you heard. You know, from Loretta, Chloe, and Amanda. And from you. Don't leave yourself out. I mean it, Verna. If you ever want to talk about this stuff, you know where I am. With what you religious types say about homosexuals, are you kidding? The Bible doesn't differentiate between homosexuals and heterosexuals. It may call practicing homosexuals sinners, but it also calls heterosexual sex outside of marriage sinful. Semantics, Buck. Semantics. Just remember what I said, Verna. I don't want our personality conflict to get in the way of what's true. Right. I'll keep that in mind. So, uh, who's the new guy back there? Hey, Dr. Klein. I'm not exactly sure how he fits into the picture, but that's not our job, right? Uh, I guess not. Oh, I feel like I've been on a plane all day. Allison, if you want to go ahead and hit your cabin... No, no, no. I'll, I'll stretch out here. Good enough. She is on some kind of a multi-leg journey that has a long layover in Milwaukee, then heads for Boston. She flies nonstop from Boston to Baghdad. I think we can expect her tomorrow morning. How long before we get the international terminal finished in New Babylon? I'm tired of everything having to come through Baghdad. They tell us a couple of months now. Oh, yes, and these are the same building engineers who tell us everything else in New Babylon is state of the art. Yes, yes sir. Have you noticed problems? <sighs> no, no, but it almost makes me wish this wrath of the lamb business was more than a myth. I would like to put the true test to their earthquake-proof claims. I saw that piece of fiction today. That Williams can make an interesting story out of anything, can't he? Yes. I suspect he has made an interesting story of his own background. I don't follow. Our intelligence forces link him to the disappearance of Rabbi Ben Judah. Yes, we are learning more and more about our brilliant young journalist. He's never been forthcoming about his ties to my own pilot. But then, neither has Captain Steele. Leon, what is the latest on those two crazy men in Jerusalem? 
They have the whole nation of Israel up in arms again. It has not rained there since they began their preaching. And that trick they pulled on the water supply, turning it into blood, they are doing that again. Ah, what has set them off this time? I think you know. I have asked you not to be circumspect with me, Leon. When I ask you a question, I expect... Uh, forgive me, potentate. They have been carrying on about the arrest and torture of people associated with Dr. Ben Judah. They are saying that until those suspects have been released and the search has been called off, all water supplies will be polluted by blood. How do they do that? No one knows, but it is very real. Is it not, Dr. Klein? Oh, yes. I have seen samples. There is a high water content, but it's mostly blood. Huh. It borders on some cross between human and animal blood. All right, all right, all right. Enough. How is morale in Israel? The people are angry with the two preachers. They want to kill them. Can we not get that done? No one dares. The death count on those who have made attacks on them is over a dozen by now. Let the suspects go. Ben Judah cannot get far without being able to show his face in public. He cannot do us much harm. If those two in Israel do not immediately purify the water supply, we will see how they stand up to an atomic blast. You, you're not serious, are you? Why would I not be? You would drop an atomic bomb on a sacred site of the holy city? Those two are giving me no end of grief, so mark my word. The day will come when they push me too far. It would be a good idea to get Pontiff Matthew's opinion of all of this. We have enough of an agenda with him, all right? In fact, I am sure he has an agenda for me as well. I know he is having financial difficulty because he cannot sell surplus churches. So he will no doubt be pleading his case for more of an allotment from the global community. And what, may I ask, is your agenda for me? <laughs> oh, dear Dr. Klein. As you know, the ten ambassadors voted unanimously to fund abortions for women in underprivileged countries. I have made an executive decision to make that unilateral. Every continent has suffered from the war, so all could be considered underprivileged. I do not anticipate a problem from Matthews on this. However, should he express some opposition, are you prepared to discuss the long-term benefits? Of course. Good, good. And where are we on the technology for predetermining the health and viability of a fetus? Amniocentesis can now tell us everything we want to know. Right. Its benefits are so far reaching that the risks are negligible. And Leon, are we at a point where we can announce sanctions requiring amniocentesis on every pregnancy uh, along with an abortion requirement for any deformed or handicapped fetus? Everything is in place. Right. However, you are going to want as broad a base of support as possible before going public with that. Yeah, of course. That is one of the reasons for this meeting with Matthew. Are you optimistic? Oh. Should I not be? Talk about your story is unending. Yeah, I know. Hey, did you hear about the sketch the comedy show's doing Saturday night? It's supposed to be an animated woolly lamb on a rampage. Humorous for a short while at best. You know, Doc, I didn't understand the scope of this when I wrote it, but uh, now it's clear. I'm exposed. Hm. I'm going to have to step down, maybe even go into hiding. It is not such a bad prospect. Yeah, but I'll never match the readership of this magazine, never have an audience like this. Cameron, I am a living example that God can work mightily when things seem darkest. Already I am catching a vision for what could happen with the technology before us. Hey, uh, stand tall, Ray. Here comes the Supreme once his face. Oh, how good of you to allow us to collect you, Pontiff. I am hoping we can have meaningful dialogue, profitable to the good of the global community. As long as it is profitable to the one world faith, I do not much care whether you benefit or not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come, Peter. Let's have this meeting. So, uh, how about lunch? we got another hour before we leave. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not hungry. You go without me. I need to get back to the cockpit and check on a few things. Good enough. I'll catch you later. I'll get right to it. If there are ways we can help each other, I want to know what you need. Because there are things I need from you. Really, Peter? Uh, such as? Frankly, I need amnesty for One World Faith's debt to your administration. 
We might be able to pay back some of our allotments someday, but right now we don't have the income. Mm, mm, mm. Having trouble selling off some of those uh, surplus church buildings. I mean, that is part of it. Mm -hmm. Our real problem lies with two religious groups who not only have refused to join our union, but who are also antagonistic and intolerant. One group is a problem you caused yourself. Your agreement of protection leaves the Jews with no reason to join. The other faction is comprised of these Christians who call themselves the Tribulation Saints. They think the Messiah raptured his church, and they missed it. Their intolerance hurts us. How so? Any religion that believes there's only one way to God is, by definition, intolerant. They become enemies of one world faith, and thus the global community as a whole. Our enemies are your enemies. Mm. We have to do something about them. Oh, this looks great, Loretta. Oh, sure it does. does. Amanda, would you mind praying for us? Sure. Father, sometimes it's difficult to know what to pray. But we thank you for who you are, that you are a good God, that you're sovereign, and that you care about us. And we thank you for friends, especially old friends like Hattie. And thank you for the provision of this food. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, Rayford uh, basically insisted I drop in on my way back. Sorry I missed him, but I think he really wanted me to talk to you anyway. Or maybe he wanted you to talk to me. I don't know. Hattie, what's troubling you the most just now? Well, the fact is, I want an abortion. I see. My family's kind of pushing me that way. I don't know what Nikolai will say, but if there's no warming between us when I get back, I'll definitely want an abortion. I suppose I'm here because I know you'll try to talk me out of it, and I guess I should hear both sides. Rayford already gave me the right-wing pro-life position, so I don't guess I need to hear that again. Well, Hattie, what do you need to hear? Hattie, um, you know where we stand, and that's not why you're here, right? I mean, if you wanted to be talked out of it, we can try to do that. But if you won't be talked out of it, nothing we say will make any difference. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry to have wasted your time. It was ridiculous for me to drag you into this. Don't feel like you have to leave, dear. This is my house, and I'm your hostess, and you might risk offending me if you were to leave too early. <laughs> no, really. I'll just wait at the airport. Hattie, listen. Uh, listen. I I've always admired you. Oh. No, I... I, I think we could have been friends in another situation. But I, I think I know why you followed my dad's advice and came here. Something tells me that your visit home wasn't all that great. <laughs> Maybe hearing that they wanted you to end this pregnancy wasn't what you really wanted. Maybe. Maybe not. Well, I mean, yes, there are things we believe... We have ideas about what you should do about your baby and what you should do about your soul. <laughs> but only you can make those decisions. So in the long run, all that we can offer is support and encouragement and love. Yeah, love. As long as I buy into everything you have to sell. No, 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 no. We're going to love you the way God loves you. You're going to love me, no matter what I do, even if I completely ignore your advice. That's it? Yeah. See, it's all about God. We mess up, and He still loves us. That's unconditional love. That's what we have to offer you, Hattie, because that's all we have going for us. Oh, believe it or not, my friend, I have already given this matter a great deal of thought. Have you? Oh, yeah. As you say, your enemies are my enemies. People who want to get along and live together will find me most generous and conciliatory. 
Those who want to cause trouble will be gone. It is as simple as that. So what are you saying, Nikolai? You're going to wage war on the fundamentalists? In a sense, I am. I believe the time has come to enforce rules for the new global community. As this would seem to benefit you as much as it would benefit me, I would like you to cooperate in forming and heading an organization of elite enforcers, if you will, of pure thought. How are you defining pure thought? I foresee a cadre of young men and women so devoted to the cause of the global community that they would be willing to train themselves and be eager to ensure all are in line with our objectives. They would blend in with society, but they would keep us informed of subversive elements who oppose our views. Now, surely you agree we, we can no longer tolerate the negative byproduct of free speech. Not only do I agree, but I stand ready to assist in any way possible. Can One World Faith help seek out candidates, train them, house them, clothe them? <laughs> Peter, I thought you were running short of funds. The end result will be more income for us. When we eliminate the opposition, everyone benefits. Ah, yes. We would call them the GCMM, the Global Community Morale Monitors. That makes them sound a little soft, don't you think? Ah, oh, precisely. We do not want to call them secret police or any kind of police. Make no mistake, they will be secret, they will have power, and they will use it for the good of the global community. To what limit? No limit. They would carry weapons? Oh, of course. And they would be allowed to use these weapons to what extent? That is the beauty of it, Pontiff Matthews. By selecting the right young people and by giving them ultimate capital power to mete out justice, we quickly subdue and eliminate the enemy. We should foresee no need of the GCMM within just a few years. Nikolai Carpathia, you are a genius. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustee. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening. Last time on Left Behind. Hey, fucko, you're throwing your career away. Your life for crying out loud. The Wrath of the Lamb. From the Book of Revelation. There's a reference to an earthquake in there. According to this, the moon's going to turn the color of that cover. Fuck, I'm keeping your secret, so I hope you're keeping your end of the bargain. Already I am catching a vision for what could happen with the technology before us. I love you so much. Goodbye, Rafe. The fact is, I want an abortion. You're going to wage war on the fundamentalists? In a sense, I am. We would call them the Global Community Morale Monitors. Based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 36 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. Cameron. Doc, how are you? I brought you something here. Oh, I see. Something to counteract my exercise regimen. <laughs> Doc, one burger and a few fries won't kill well, you. A steady diet of them on the other hand. So are you actually able to work out down here? I am. Uh, about an hour a day. <laughs> Pole vault? Sorry. Ah, uh, forget it. Exercising the body keeps me in a better frame of mind. Hmm. I'm really glad to hear it. Cameron, were I not living with a heaviness of soul right now... 
Certain parts of this place, even in its location, would be paradise. I, I can read, I, I can study, I, I can pray, I, I can communicate by phone and computer. <laughs> it is a scholar's dream. I, I miss the interaction with my colleagues, but Amanda and Chloe are wonderful students themselves. Oh, thank you. Yeah, they took the lady I told you about back to the airport in Milwaukee. Yeah, so was it Hattie? Hmm. Right. She's on her way back to New Babylon. Carrying the child of the Antichrist. <laughs> A shame. Hmm. I wanted some kind of breakthrough with her. <laughs> These things take time, Cameron. Uh, time is a funny animal lately, isn't it, Doc? Uh, we should pray for her now. Hmm. Oh, God, we bring Hattie to you and pray for your intervention in her life and the life of the child she is. Potentate, I have disturbing news to report regarding Hattie Durham. Yes? Apparently she flew from Milwaukee to Boston, but did not connect with her flight to Baghdad. Where is she now? Uh, well, Where is she? I will personally find out and report to you with- I want an answer immediately! Oh, wait a minute. Perhaps she is taking care of the problem. I will have an answer by the time we reach New Babylon, Potentate. But she is a loose cannon, Leon. A possible embarrassment. You will find her. Cameron, I need to talk about my family. I, I hope you don't mind. Oh, Doc, you can talk about them any time you want. Forgive me for not asking more often. I know you wonder if you should bring up such a painful subject. That, as long as we don't dwell on how they died, I am most pleased to talk about my memories. Your wife seemed like a wonderful woman. She was. And the children, too, though our family was human. You told me they all became believers shortly after you did. Mm, yes, I, I don't understand how anyone with any exposure to the Bible could doubt the meaning of the mass vanishings. It breaks my heart. Here, I, I want you to see this. I am nearly finished with the first booklet in a series based on Bruce's writings. He was not a linguist, and so I'm adding some of that to his work. I think it makes for a, a better final product. Hmm. I'm sure Bruce would agree. Looks great. You know, I'll likely be the first to join you here on a permanent basis. <laughs> I cannot see you as content to hide out. <laughs> It'll drive me crazy, there's no doubt about that. But I've been careless. I'm taking risks. The cover story? Well, it's bound to catch up with me. You will be able to do what I can do on the Internet. Yeah. Imagine what you can do with the truth. You can write the way you used to write, with total objectivity and seriousness. Say that again. What? About the truth. I said you can write the truth, that's all. Hmm. Truth. Good name for a magazine, don't you think? Well, I suppose. Look at this. Check this out. I could write the copy, design some simple graphics, and publish it on the net. Donnie assures me that we can never be traced here. Hmm. Interesting. Cameron, while I wouldn't want to see you forced into self-incarceration, I confess I would enjoy the company. You wanted to see me, sir? Oh, Captain Steele. Yeah, yeah. Let me get straight to the point. Uh, Miss Durham knows you. She has confided in you. Hmm? Thus, it should come as no surprise that there has been some... Trouble in paradise, as they say. She told me there had been problems. Mm -hmm. Well, let me be frank. Miss Durham overestimated the seriousness of our relationship. A man in my position has no room for a personal life. Now, she seemed pleased with the prospect of bearing a child. My child. Now, should she take the pregnancy to term, I would, of course, exercise my fiscal responsibility. However, it is unfair to expect me to be a father. Sir, I'm not sure I understand why you're telling me this. I have needs like any other man, Captain Steele. You understand. The fact is, I, I am enjoying another relationship already. Therefore, you can see my dilemma. What about the ring you gave her? Oh, she may keep it. The stone was much too large for an engagement ring. It clearly is decorative. I will do the right thing by Miss Durham, rest assured of that. You're saying that you'll give her some sort of severance or settlement? Yes. If that will make it easier for her, I, I am happy to do that. 
Oh, Captain Steele, I have an assignment for you. I deduced that. <laughs> of course you would. You are a bright man. Uh, we have received word that Miss Durham is back on her itinerary and is expected in Baghdad on a flight from Boston Monday morning. Monday morning? Yes, assuming you are free, I would ask that you would meet Miss Durham's plane. As her old friend, you will be the right one to break this news to her. Her belongings have been delivered to one of the condominiums in your building. You've already moved her out? She will be allowed to stay there for a month before deciding where she would like to relocate. Aren't you asking me to do what you ought to do? <laughs> oh, make no mistake. I'm not afraid of this confrontation. It is just that I am under such crushing deadlines. We have established many new directives and, and legislative encyclicals in light of the recent insurrection. You see, I simply cannot be away from the office. Any questions? No. It's all clear. You will do it, then? I wasn't under the impression I had a choice. <laughs> you have a good sense of humor, Captain Steele. Your military background has trained you well. When a directive is given, it is to be carried out. I appreciate that. Oh, uh, before you go, yes, might I ask you one further question? Sure. Yes, I would like to know about your relationship with Cameron Williams. Do you know him? Yeah, he's my son-in-law. Hmm. And can you think of any reason why he would not have shared that uh, happy news with me? I suppose you'll have to ask him that, sir. Well, then perhaps I should ask you. Why would you not have shared that with me? It's just personal family business. Anyway, with him serving you at such a high level, I assumed you'd become aware of it soon enough. Does it happen that he shares your religious beliefs? I prefer not to speak for Buck. I will take that as a yes. I am not saying that this is necessarily a problem. Well, I will look forward to a report of your meeting with Miss Durham, and I have full confidence that it will be successful. Buck Williams. Buck, I just got an interesting call from Rayford. Uh, Amanda, where are you? Almost to New Babylon. It, we landed about an hour. Hmm. Well, what did he say? He asked if I'd met up with Hattie on the flight from Boston to Baghdad. Hmm. She got off schedule or something, so he thought she might have hooked up with me. And she didn't. No. Do you know what's going on? Oh, I have no idea. I just hope Hattie didn't stop in Boston to have an abortion. I'd have flown with her if I'd known she was going to delay our return. Well, maybe you'll see her there. Chloe misses you already, by the way. Oh. She's really bummed about you leaving. I wish I could talk Ray into letting me move back that way. I'd, I'd see less of him, but I don't think much of him in New Babylon either. Yeah, well, don't forget about the computer. Yeah, except we're nine hours later than you guys. Hmm. I mean, what time is it there, anyway? A little after eight in the morning, right? Yeah. Hmm. Our little tribulation force is about as spread out as it's ever been. I sure hope Ray's right about Hattie. It'll be handy if he can pick us both up. Yeah, this is Rayford Steele. I need a ride to pick up Miss Durham in Baghdad. Um, and my wife is oh, at the... I'm sorry, sir. I'm no longer Miss Durham's driver. I've been reassigned to the executive suite. Hmm. Um, any idea where I could get some wheels? Uh, you could try the motor pool, but that takes a while. Lots of paperwork. Oh, I don't have that kind of time. Uh, any other suggestions? If the potentate called the motor pool, you'd have a vehicle as quick as you wanted. Oh, yeah. Good idea. Thanks. The office of the potentate? Yes, uh, Rayford Steele. I need to talk with the potentate. I'm sorry, I... he is unavailable. Is he there? He is here, sir, but as I said, he's not available. Well, this is sort of urgent. Uh, if he's at all interruptible, I'd appreciate talking to him for, for just a second. Please hold. The potentate wants to know if you could drop by his office for a moment before you finish your assignment. Um, I'm a little short of time, but... I'll uh, tell for... him you'll be here, then. Good day. Uh, uh... Mac, you free right now? Yeah, Ray, where you at? Almost at the Global Community Headquarters. I'm heading up to Carpathia's office. Yeah, Ray, what's up? Um, I need a chopper ride to Baghdad. My wife's coming in, and I'm supposed to meet Hattie Durham as well. <laughs> I've been hearing all kinds of rumors about her. Like what? Well, like Carpathia squeezed her out, and uh, that she might be in the family way. 
I'm not at liberty to say anything, Mac. I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be in Carpathia's office in a few minutes. Hey, uh, what's up? Uh, what's going on there? Uh, it's the strangest thing. <laughs> you know how every condo around here has some kind of rare breed of dog? Yeah, especially don't like those poofy things. Yeah, uh, well, they're going crazy. One just broke away from his owner when running down the street. Yeah, probably just a full moon coming up. Hey, listen, I'll see you at the helipad in about ten minutes. Um, uh, good. Uh, thanks. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. How's that? Uh, Doc, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, perfectly. Oh, okay. uh, I thought we should try the video feature. Yeah, <laughs> that's impressive. Let's hope Donnie's dead on about being untraceable. Uh, are you in a secure area? Yeah, I'm in my office. What's up? I would like a companion for breakfast. I'm, I'm feeling much better today, but I'm getting a little claustrophobic here. <laughs> I know you can't sneak me out, but could you get in without Loretta suspecting? Oh, I can try. What would you like for breakfast? Oh, no, no. I have cooked something American just for you. Uh, can you see it back there? You've cooked American. Okay. <laughs> I think I'd rather be surprised. I'm on my way. Alice, I'll be gone a couple of hours. Just hold my messages. Okie dokie. I could swing by Loretta's and get Chloe, but we'd have to think of something to tell Loretta at the church. Huh. Can't walk in without her seeing me. Maybe... Yeah. We could say hi to Loretta, then leave the back way and slip down to the shelter. Okay. That'll work. Windy city weather. Nice day. Mostly sunny with a very slight chance of an afternoon shower. <laughs> Huh. Today, oh, Whoa. Whoa. I have never seen snakes on the road before. Hey, bud! Yeah. Watch out for the roadkill. It's getting out of hand. Uh, yeah. yeah ever, uh, ever seen anything like this? Never. Must be a forest preserve or something nearby, huh? Uh, not that I know of. Hey, check it out. Don't see that every day at this intersection. Whoa! A deer! <laughs> What's with the stoplight? Weird, huh? <laughs> yeah, can't, uh, can't be the wind. Something I can think of. Oh, no. <laughs> hey! Thank you for stopping in, Captain Steele. I just wanted to reiterate about Miss Durham. Ah. Uh, she may ask to talk to me. That will be out of the question. Excuse it... me, potentate, sir. We are getting some strange readouts on our power meters. Power meters? I leave maintenance to you and your staff, sir, Leon. there's an emergency call from the International Seismograph Institute. Well, take that, Leon. I am busy. Leon Fortunado. Uh, as I was saying, Miss Durham may want to talk to me. What? It... Leon! Uh, but, sir... Captain Steele, I was talking to Matt, you. where are you? I'm on the roof. Good. Start her up. I'm on my way. Sir, the seismograph... It... Steele, where are you going? I would like order in here, please. What's happening? I'm right behind you, Captain. This is slack and nice. the road of Hurry up, Ray. Get in here. Get on. Let's walk her. I gotta go. We gotta go. I'm in, but there are others. No, there is no more room. Let's Let's walk. Down no, now. No. There's no more blood. No, pull away, Mr. Bill. We have to do something. They're dead if we don't help. There is no hope for them now. You see? The building's collapsing around. Pull up. Pull up. All right, we're all right. Now we gotta get these people to the ground. We will do nothing of the sort. You can't just let them die. There's only one left. What do you want me to do here, Ray? Open the door. No. Oh, here, give, give me a hand. I'm trying! Captain Steele, scrap yourself! Now get us to safety! You show me where safety is and I'll land! The ground is churning like water! Baghdad! Get us to Baghdad Airport, now! Time to find out what this car is really made of! Again! I gotta call Chloe. Whoa! 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 No way I can try and punch numbers now. Oh, God. Help me make it home. Oh, oh man. What happened to the sun? Huh. It's totally dark, and the, and the street lights. It's, it's like midnight. Oh. There you go, headlights. Oh, no! Oh! Oh! oh. oh. The 
This crack must be ten feet deep. Oh, if I don't get out of here, uh, I'm gonna be crushed. Uh, I, can, I can crawl out the window. Uh, uh, okay, okay, maybe now. All right, all right, car. Let's see what your all-wheel drive can do. Uh, oh, come on, come on, uh, come on. Uh, 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 uh. Look out for the sidewalk! Oh, oh, oh man! Oh, this is unbelievable! Oh, telephone pole! Straight lamp! Oh! Oh! I've been West. West, yeah. Okay. West is. West is that way! Oh, God. God. Did you get us through all of this just to let us be killed by an earthquake? <clears throat> oh, please. Please. Oh, uh, keep Chloe safe. Oh, and Doc and, and Loretta. Uh, but if you're gonna take them, oh, I pray you do it quickly. Oh, don't. Don't let them suffer. Oh, I've never seen anything like that. Everywhere, the ground, it's rolling like the ocean. How much further to the airport? A few more minutes. Uh, what is it, Mac? Up there. It can't be. How could the... Look at the moon! Red. No, as red as blood. I'll bet you're excited to see your husband again. Oh, I am. <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't help but overhear your phone conversation. <laughs> We're newlyweds. Oh. Both of our spouses were taken in the disappearances. Mm. Well, I hope you have a wonderful reunion then. Thank you. <laughs> He's probably at the air airport right now, waiting. <laughs> That's strange. The, the airport. <laughs> For a minute, I, I thought it was moving. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's going on? I, I thought that we were landing. Something made him change his mind. Just, oh. just hold on. It, it looks like he's going to try and, and turn it around. Oh, it's all right. Hold on. Oh. How in the world could anyone survive that? The safest place in the world right now is in the air. Oh, God. Let her still be in the air. And if not, receive her under yourself without her suffering. Please. And Hattie, oh. I hope she came to faith in you before all of... Look! What? Look! From the sky! No Meteor... Ray, this is not a meteor shower! Come on! Go! Whoa! Whoa, what was that? Uh. Oh! Oh! Meteors! Oh. I gotta get out of here! Uh. Come on! Uh. Oh. Now, just like nothing ever happened, the sun comes out. Which way you want to go here? Baghdad. Listen, Ray, you can see as well as I can. Everything's gone. There's no hope of anyone. I don't care what it looks like. Take me to the airport. Captain Steele, I understand your concern for Miss Dora. My but... wife was on a flight that was due in a few minutes ago. Amanda? All right, Ray, just off starboard. You can see the airport or uh, what's left of it. Oh, dear God, no. No! Set us down here, Mac. Set us down! Unbelievable. God, help me find Doc and Loretta and all this rubble. Huh? huh? Sun's out. Like it never happened. Loretta's car. Oh. An arm. No. No. Loretta? No. No! Come on! Loretta! Loretta! No! Oh! Oh, Loretta! Oh, I can't... I can't leave you here. Oh, but even if I could move the car, there's no place to take you. Oh, Loretta... Loretta, I'm so sorry. God. 
Doc. Oh, Doc. Oh. Doc. Hey, Doc. 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 Doc, are you down there? Doc. Doc. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, Doc, I can hear you. I can hear you. Are you all right? I am all right. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. You don't want to see what's going on up here anyway. Oh, whole house is everything. Swallow it into the ground. Oh, thank God you're all right, Doc. Oh, she, oh, she's... Oh, Doc, she's she's gone. I I found her under her car. Oh, I am sorry. It wasn't a great earthquake. Uh, it had to be. Do you think you can get to me? Uh, oh, I'll get to you. Uh, I need you to help me look for Chloe, no, okay? No, 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 yeah, you're right, of course, of course, you're right. You what? must look for your wife. Uh, I am okay for now, Buck. You go. Uh, I will wait for you. Okay, okay. All right, Doc. Doc, I'll be back for you as soon as I can, okay? Oh, Chloe, oh. Chloe, if you're alive... No. Oh, no. Buck, don't do that. No ifs. Chloe, you have to be alive. Don't leave me! Not now! Do either of you have a working phone? Get out! You, what? Get, what are you doing? Out of that chopper now! Captain Steele, I understand you're upset, but you have no... Shut up! Ray. I would be careful I if I were you! Can't shut up! Ray, don't do it, man. I'll explain this away. You'll say it was a natural disaster. You'll use it for your own good. But I want to be the first to tell you. <clears throat> Carpathia, you have just seen the wrath of the Lamb! Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bustide. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening.